Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, June 27th, 2016. Thank you to HCAM for uh, taping the meeting. Uh, we're missing one member today. Hopefully, he will be arriving sometime soon. Didn't hear he wasn't coming. So. We didn't hear he wasn't coming, so we expect uh, to see our one member shortly. A agenda today, uh, we're going to start off with a uh, review of the economic development chapter of the uh, master plan. Uh, then we're going to go into uh, the Hayden Row Solar uh, Farm uh, special permit. Uh, that'll go f probably till about eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, we will uh, continue on with Legacy North. Legacy North, we'll talk about Pulte tonight. The two special permits, we will uh, uh, not go go to those yet tonight and um, the 930 151 Hayden Row uh, lots of special historic structures uh, will be continued so uh, we will uh, uh, have a little bit more time at the end we have a bunch of administrative stuff to go but here it's at 7 o'clock and we now have our members so let's kind of open up with a discussion of the economic development chapter of the master plan for everyone's information this is the last chapter that uh, we're to review before they kind of get consolidated as, as one uh, I might suggest that we have Elaine and Jennifer look at it as a whole uh, because there are some goals that might be in conflict and maybe we have one more meeting where we talk about any conflicts that are there and then at that point we are going to release the draft master plan or develop our comments by other committees and boards of the town and for citizens and we will have a public hearing this is not necessarily a public hearing today but we will take some comments from the public and we will try to get through it uh, Fran and Frank were the two uh, people responsible for drafting this so a lot of the questions as to why it is what it is if it comes from that from members of the board then uh, they'll take the lead on trying to answer those so uh, let's just kind of dig through and maybe we just start start at the start with the first page and um, see whether people have any any uh, questions comments on the first page and I defer to members of the planning board on the first page anything that the only thing that kind of jumps out to me I'm going to just jump in here because I'm not seeing anyone else is in the second major paragraph we have the rural residential character and that's always the words that are kind of I won't say fighting words but we're in a flux on those I think this personally I think the sentence could do just as well without that and just talk about character the values um, resolve I, I have a hard time I have a little bit of hard time with this whole paragraph where we're trying to sell business in this particular section of the plan and this kind of says, well, we're kind of for it, but we're a little bit worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how the other people read it that way or not. But I think if you got rid of the rural, rural residential character, for sure, that would make it a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I think there was some feedback, to Mr. Chairman, um, along the similar lines that it's, although it was rural maybe 10 years ago, I think the makeup has changed considerably. To the, to the point uh, where it's not really rural, even though some people may see it that way and might wish it were that way. <coughs> I think from an economic perspective that unless you're, you can put an agriculture business in here, the rural component probably be a better served rural. Okay. But I, I think that the origins of that being in the document 
were directly from in, in, ten years ago, the voices provision of yep. and then uh, keeping the rural character is important to a lot of people. And we are looking for business <coughs> here at Hopkinton. Uh, but I think it's important that businesses respect that character of the town as well. So we're not scaring anyone off, but we're not looking for an oil refinery or another. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. I, I think if you got rid of rural residential character, that the, you know, you just, that makes it for they just read a little bit better. And I do understand that I think the, the, the quandary where we are. I mean, you know, our zoning doesn't say, you know, go build every big box store in the world. I mean, you know, we do have it reflected in our zoning, kind of what you did here, but every time we think about it, we kind of shake our heads. Any other comments? Mr. Sonic? In that case, why don't you just say rural character for both residential and business? Business can certainly be a rural character. I would, I would agree with that because a lot of South Street is industrial, but if you're meeting at EMC, you're surrounded by trees. You could not went up. Good use of roads. So what was that wording again? Just kind of yeah, rural character for both residential and business. Sounds like, sounds like it could be viability. That way, nobody's in. Interrupt for one second. Sure. I think, um, if you read this sentence in its entirety, what it's saying is not, is, is accurate. <coughs> it's saying that these initiatives in this chapter should balance the desire for tax revenue with the rural residential character that the residents value. So it's saying that, what it's saying is that the residents here value a rural residential character, but they still want a business tax revenue. I'm not saying your town is one or the other. It's saying what you value versus. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not sure how changing the language is helping this. I, I, just I guess it ha has to be. Excuse me, through the chair. Yeah. I guess it has to be read through its context in order to for it to. Yeah. Well, yeah. we we took out the rural and a couple a couple other paragraphs when we were going through there. That's kind of that's my consistency on the other. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think the, con the the sentence still works and the paragraph works, balancing the character. We just don't okay. it, don't uh, put any adjectives in front of it. So you want to say residential character or just character of the, that the residents value? Desire for tax revenue. You just use character of the residents value. That's pretty. That's pretty vague. I, it is, but will we define it with the th vision themes, maybe. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, we also define it a few other spots, I think, in the, in the plan. You kind of point to it. This, this might be one of the things that when you're reading through the whole plan, you kind of yeah. flag these. Sure. Okay. Uh, page two. Comments from people on that one? John? I, I don't know where we want to put it, and I don't think we should put a major emphasis on it. But unless I missed it, I didn't see anything referencing the EMC sale and the potential implications because it might mean additional growth. It might mean some vacancy and other growth opportunities. But I think there will be a change from it, but we don't know what it is. But it's something that should be mentioned someplace because over the course of this period, Maybe under on page three under economic for, forecast, and maybe we put something kind of generic about it, like that's that's a big unknown. Yeah, I think we left it just because it was such an unknown that you know, we don't know if it's going to be a plus, negative, or it's just going to be neutral. Maybe we maybe we just write a a, a, a bullet a bullet or two saying that we're not sure. Got yeah. a TBD. To, to be determined. I, on page two, under the paragraph called new construction, 
I found that to be very confusing, particularly with the references to 2000, year 2000, because I'm, I'm more programmed into, I'll say, this decade, which would be 2010, as opposed to... And, and so the numbers don't jive with what I had in my... You know, I, I think that that needs a, 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 a little bit of updating in that, that whole new construction. The, the overall gist of it is fine. It's just I think the numbers need, and, and maybe the reference is from 2010. Yeah. Can also, like, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure how the whole document falls out, but should it say from 2000 to 2016 or something like that, an end range here? I mean, this is going to be, people are going to be looking at this five years from now and kind of wondering. Well, it's, it's kind of talking about a little bit of history, I think, is in that paragraph. You know, maybe you need to, to talk about 2000 to 2010, and then maybe 2010 right. to 2000 in current or present. Yeah, so, something in that, so, so kind of a rework in that area. Along the same lines, the second paragraph, most option residents, it gives a bunch of percentages there, but I mean, are those for 2016? I don't, like, if I read that five, five years from now, what do these per percentages represent? It says right at the beginning of 2014. No, the paragraph before it, most opt-in residents. 84% of the town's residents commute to work by car. Let me see. Is that, is that all 2014 yeah. as well, or? No, that's as of the writing of this, I believe. Which was when? This year. 2016, off of my point is census. My we point ought to say what, what, year, what it is, yeah. so. Where the data is from. Okay. I have a question. Sure. And on the Hopkinton Today paragraph on page one, Mm -hmm. It seems to end, doesn't finish correctly. It looks like they transposed the last part of the sentence onto the top of page two, skip the vision team paragraph. I'm assuming that 12% belongs at the end of Hockington today. The vision theme is just like a, like an insert. Foot like oh, it's just an insert. Yeah. Footnote. Yeah. Footnote. Like a, oh, that's a footnote okay. that we put at the beginning of every chapter. Like you want a picture or something. Oh, you know, okay. So, yes. You want to correct that the paragraph does continue to next. Okay. Okay. I have a question. And I think at the top of the first paragraph of page two, would it be better to see it chronologically or the percentage of residents working is 5 for 1. Then it says Hopkinton's annual unemployment rate went from a high of 6.4 in 2001 to, 2000 to uh, 2010 to a low of 3 in 2001. Should that be more the opposite? Instead of going a high of 6.4 in 2010 to a low of 3% in 2001, should that be a low Reversed. Of, reverse the, the way it's written versus... Yeah, I would agree. But uh, the uh, these numbers are... High of 6.4 in 2010. Right, but it's to just saying that like the transpose it. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just transpose it. Because then you go on to say in 2016 it was 3.5. And you could say that they increased from 3% to 6.4%, right? Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. in the order makes more sense. To me. Yeah, it, so. it makes to more me, sense for readability. I know you, from, sure. from no, 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 a positive good. standpoint, it sounds better than what you wrote. Okay. I thought you had a question in the number No. No. Mr. Chair? Yeah. yeah. Still under new construction. Yep. Um, I think uh, you know the discussion about legacy farms is is certainly important with how great of an impact that is on the town, but also of great impact on the town is what's going on on Lumber Street right now, um, and and the new development here downtown. You know the restaurant, the opening of you know new businesses downtown, the redevelopment of the of the library, the expansion of the library. Okay, and that's not including the center of town recon and all that stuff. Well, that hasn't. Yeah. So add downtown, add Lumber Street. I mean, and that all has, that I mean, all has to do with economic growth. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Page three. Have anything there? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, just looking back at the uh, 2007 report, there was I don't think there was any mention of legacy farms. I could be wrong. Um, it seems that that 
deserves a little more uh, expansion and kind of detail on what it it is and what it will entail ultimately. Just a comment. Okay. We, in the housing section, we have a pretty large paragraph on legacy, gotcha. I okay. believe. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I had a question yep. on the economic forecast. I didn't understand the paragraph where it talks about employment was expected to grow. And then at the end, it says the actual number of workers in the population in 2014 exceeded projections for 2020. Is that tied into the first page where it talks about the Hopkinton labor force increased by 30% to 7,264 people? Or is that a completely different percentage? Right. Yeah, from page three, it talks about, it says it's already exceeded the 2020 projections, which are 11,588, uh, uh, 11,007. And then on the first page, it says the labor force increased by 30% to 7,264 people. I'm trying to draw parallels to whether it's, it says it here it exceeded the number of 11,000 and here it says it's at 7,200. Are they two different So that numbers? economic forecast paragraph refers to a MAPC study that was done that projected our... Right, but it says it exceeded the projections. Of the study. Right. Of the, of the study. And the study said it should be at, by now it should be... I, I, th I think your, your real question is, is it, is it 11 or 7? 7, yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, the labor force in 1990 in the old uh, was 6829. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 29. So I think that 7264 number is supposed to be higher. Much higher. Yeah. The 11 number sounds more close. Closer, closer but not. There's two different labor force as are the residents in the labor force. So when you have a large employer pulling in people from outside that number, I'm not saying which one is right, but they would be different because one's talking about how many people employed in town versus how many people residing in town that are, are employed working. any place. That are working. So that's, yes, I guess that's the difference between the two numbers. So should that be? That, so that kind of says that there's 7,200 of you guys that are working in this town as opposed to some of us that are just Man taking up space. <laughs> That's a, a clarification job. Did you suggest wording to clarify? You want to add on line two from 1990-2013, the resident labor force in Hopkins. Okay. Okay, I think, good job. I think <clears throat> we're down to page four. Anyone have comments on page four? The, the only comment I had was on the... the the third page from the paragraph from the bottom, we talk about hotels. Uh, the addition of hotels within the town of Hopkinton will provide a use not historically allowed, maybe recently allowed. I don't know. I, I, I just found that wording a little complex because historically we actually did have lots of hotels 100 years ago. Yeah, but that was pre zoned. Yes, I guess. <laughs> When life was good, and, and, and employment was high <laughs> in town. And nothing burnt down mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. So not recently, historically allowed. Or just recently. <coughs> Either that or just get rid of the whole... whole uh, Hotels were not supported by zoning. Hotels are supported by zoning. No. 
they have been so three weeks. saying this allowed, there's Correct. an easier way to say it. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Chair, you're going to suggest deleting the sentence, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure it adds significant to it. Yeah. If you took it out, I think it would be okay if you just got rid of that whole thing. And and then we also might want to say that we also re, re, rezone that in 2015, too. There was a, a change to the hotel zoning. 2016. What? 16. 16. Yes, it is. The, Time the is flying. 2016 zoning changes in yep. so. Yeah. Any other uh, questions on four? So are you taking that whole last sentence out? Yeah. We don't need to be negative. Page five, I've got only one minor change. You have a, a third paragraph down. You have 2018 for funding. Uh, it's actually fiscal year 2007, or 2019 fiscal year. But, but put fiscal year in it. We'll actually get the money in 2018. Fiscal year 2019? Yes. <coughs> we are still in the downtown plan. We did not get bumped at the recent uh, MOP meeting. So can I just, some of this section on this page and the previous page address the city of Brian's comments from, yeah. um, so do you, is that satisfactory to you or do you still want that moved up to the previous pages or do you want additional information? I mean, it's under, it is under commercial development, which that's really a lot of this is. Okay. Okay. Anything else for five? Six. <coughs> okay, now we're getting into the goals, and that, that's that's the meat of the whole thing. The other is kind of the setting the window dressing for, for the goals. Uh, I'm going to defer to other people. Do other people have any changes? In the goals? Uh, this is page six. If not, I'm going to say the goal for improving downtown parking I think needs to be stronger. The last paragraph sentence in that it seems to me to be a little bit weak. The town should look to work with the space currently available while working with the community and local businesses, always looking forward to changes that might make additional land available over time. I think you want a stronger goal that, that basically says we need downtown parking or downtown's going to it's going to it's going to be worse than it is today. I agree. Uh, a stronger closing sentence after that sentence you just read, saying just that. Okay. I. Yeah. That okay, Jen? Your master plan. <laughs> 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 well, no, I just as long as you got it, you got the piece of it, right? Okay. Any, I don't see any other comments. Page six on goals. Page seven. Maintain proper zoning. Planning board should continue working with the developers to make sure they understand and respectful of the rural nature of the town. I Ken, can we just go back for a second? Yeah, sure. Um, you do have noted in there Cedar Street um, development, right? Uh, as far as um, the intersection restructuring to the right hand turn of, of Cedar Street. We, we talk about that significantly on, on the last page. On the last page, okay, we'll get to that. Yeah. All right, sorry, thanks for the yeah, digress. That's okay. I, I, I'm not sure whether the maintain proper zoning, planning board can ensure all sections are zoned properly and the intent of the zoning meets the expectations, reality of each lot and, main, and maintains the. That whole paragraph is such a motherhood statement that, yes. that I'm not sure. It, Zone properly. <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't know how how that kind of works for that. I mean, I uh, to me it's I could do with I, I don't I don't view that as an actionable goal. No, it's not a goal. It's well, a, it's an action. It, it is a it, it's something we, we fine tune every year, and when people ask town meeting why is this always like eight or nine or ten yeah. uh, motions from 
uh, play board, and this is what we're doing. We're, we're going through making sure that the reality of the zonings matches the uh, our intent. So but, if we but need to change a, a bylaw or adjust a bylaw here or there or adjust a lot here or there, uh, that's what we do. And I think if this is a better way to put the wording on that, you know, yes, please can you know add that in. But it's there because uh, it's one of our goals. But it, it, that's what the board is designed for in the first place, is to maintain that. Uh, I'd love to see the, 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 the wording that actually says this. Yeah. Uh, because I do think, if not a goal, it's a principle. And it's one that we need to kind of continually monitor. Mm -hmm. And I think having it as a goal uh, does us no disservice for what the board is intended to do. Um, and I thought our Frank and I's point was to kind of reiterate that. Now, is there language that could be a little bit better stated in there? Possibly. Clearer. But I do think that having a goal as such uh, for the board to be able to kind of manage and maintain the right type of zoning is important. I agree with you. But I also find it redundant that we would be the planning board and, and have to state that. Anyway. If, if we just change the last part of that paragraph or sentence, I'd be happy with it. I, I'm, I'm not sure how that gets other than Zach continue. I don't know how we act on it, per se. One quick question on yep. that last sentence. Are we still a rural matrix town? Me, sorry, well, that was part of the what, what, what uh, jumped out on me. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try to continue on because there's a lot more here in the last page and a half. And I do want to get this through here. We're, we're going to push, push on here for just a couple more minutes here. Now, we're uh, manage economic opportunities. Um, we have a business development resource person. Uh, I would object to this person be responsible to make sure the right zoning is in place because that that is tr truly not that person's job, but really town Great. meetings town meetings job. Uh, some of the other stuff, you know, could be uh, could be in there, but uh, in fact, you might even leave that whole job description out of there because I think it's a significantly more uh, I think our intent is to have uh, someone in town hall focused on working with new businesses so that there's a, there's a property that business needs match the zoning that is on that property so that everything is uh, going in the right direction instead of I think if you do without that job description in there, then I think it, the whole paragraph makes a lot more sense to me. You get rid of this individual responsible for, and get rid of that, and just say the individual will be a voice of the various businesses back yeah. into town hall and an advocate for the business community. That sounds right. That's fine. Right. Our because then there's no uh, yeah, Our job isn't to define right. the job description. Right. It's really to kind of speak to the goal and intent. What that role is. Yeah. I mean, you did great work on it, but uh, it's just a little over. And 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 on the last paragraph of that, I would add Lumber Street to the areas where we're increasing the commercial tax base is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that's that's. And then looking at the last page, unless I see any other comments. Just um, under the more detailed thinking. The West Main Street corridor. See how it says resolved misaligned intersection of Wood Street. Should we that probably, if not moved, at least should be duplicated under the intersections goal. Improve intersections. Duplicated this one? would probably be the better solution. It's the fourth bullet point. Do you think? What's that? Duplicated would probably be the better solution on that. Yeah, sure. See that where it says resolve misaligned intersection of Wood Street and West Main Street? Yeah. We also have a goal to improve intersections and it's not listed under there. Okay. So either move or copy it. 
Yeah. Do that. Now this actually, is, actually, let's just move it. Move it? Yeah, I think that works. Yeah. Okay, you said that we have a Cedar Street um, association affiliation to this last page. Is that correct? No, it was on the previous one. Oh, it's on the previous one. It's the first bullet, Route 85 and 135 intersection in downtown. All right, well, I, I, going back to that, if I may, um, the we have a we have a situation where we have a right hand turn on Cedar Street that is not being used to its fullest efficiency, and I and it's been a quagmire ever since I can remember, and it seems to only be getting worse for the whole situation. I I've been in, this is one of my little pet peeves. I think that if we can get that to work, although we I see on the on the master plan for the re restructuring of downtown intersection. Um, when you take that right hand turn, you're going, they're also going to incorporate a forward motion arrow, which is going to stop that right hand turn in the first place. So um, it, it, it kind of a, defeats itself in the structuring of what we're doing right now for the center of town and having that right hand turn availability. Because once we add a forward arrow, and a right-hand turn there. Anyone that well, goes up and is going forward from that point on will have a difficulty. Anyone behind there trying to take the right-hand turn stops it immediately. It, it, it ends because the, the person going forward has to go to the has to go with the light. Okay. But well, we've the got there, there's yeah. a larger picture here. Is that the bypass road, Legacy Farm North Road, the Rafferty Road? That road is going to take a lot of traffic away from downtown, and it's almost complete. Uh, it's almost ready. Uh, so yeah, we have listed these things. We, we don't have solutions, but we've listed the. We've got the intersection in there as a, you know, listed. And, you know, let's not try to. Let's yeah. not try to engineer them in a master plan. Exactly. Right. Okay. A um, couple comments I've got on the last goal. Uh, Elmwood Park. Uh, I don't agree with the rezone as a mixed use live work and play environment uh, the live part I do not believe that we should be putting it in the middle of our industrial zone but that's that is me and maybe we need to have something that says work with the new owners in that area uh, yeah maybe just an overall comment about how to improve it not about rezoning it right well so your zoning might be Maybe, maybe we need to, to up, upgrade it or, you know, maybe, maybe make make it more general. Right, yeah, we can be more generic then about the rezoning. If we just put a possibility of yeah. rezoning. Reasonable possibility. I mean, it really depends a lot on what all the new owners are going to do and want to do in that area. Um, the downtown Main Street one, yeah. we've, got, we've got a lot of small details I think that the other key one that this board ought to add is to provide larger storm water collection and centralized storm water recharge to allow denser de redevelopment downtown I do remember you said that I'm sorry if it didn't get in there uh, Ken, sorry yeah, it's okay. and then the last one we got kind of a the last sentence in the thing sounds kind of neat but it's not a goal. The planning board sees a bright future with controlled development meeting all the needs, all the citizens of Hopkinton and maintaining our historical residential and rural small town. I, I'm not sure that fits into any of the <coughs> goals per se. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice statement. Maybe it's a nice word you can use somewhere else, but I don't think it belongs where, where it is. Yeah, I think the first sentence kind of summarizes the, the goal, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So strike the second sentence, I'm fine with that. It's more of a summary of all the goals. If you want to, if you, if you think that that's in, in, if you think that's important, it ought to be at the, uh, in the paragraph, at the, the top of the economic development goal paragraph, if sure. people think Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, just one comment. Uh, one thing I think that should have its own goal is water and sewer infrastructure uh, analysis and capacity and expansion to make sure that we are really providing water and sewer in all of our commercially and industrially zoned properties, which is not the case now. And it was a goal from the 2007 master plan and of all of them. I feel pretty strong as a continuing goal. Okay, and always ongoing. Okay. Any other comments? I mean, everyone's going to get another shot at this, at, at least two or three. The planning board members will get another shot at it at least two more meetings. And, when we, and we will, at this point, combine it, kind of update it, put it all in one document, and then we'll look at it one more last time, and then it's going out to all the committees and everyone in town. Scott? Yeah, and then just one more oh, thing. We, go ahead. we did receive, well, again, in general, again, we did receive this, uh, the 2020 committee, the chamber is reviewing this, and uh, we would look forward to any continued input that we might have that will help. You will, craft you'll it. get, we, we, we have our next shot at it mm -hmm. with all everyone else, then we will have a public hearing where we really want comments, and then we'll take whatever's left of those public comments, and then we will issue it finally and our goal is to get it done this fall I think okay we are very busy and I've already kind of jumped into a little bit of time we have a bunch of hearings tonight um, we'll get to the rest of the administrative business at the end so I'd like to reopen the continued public hearing for 201 Hayden Row Street this is a commercial solar photo uh, special Permit Thank application you, and stormwater management application from Select Energy Development. Uh, okay, we are, let's see, where are we on this one? Can uh, we get the applicant up here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. That's what you said. Um, okay. Um, it just says select. I think when we last left this, we were really down to about four issues. We'll, we'll try to tackle those, and then we'll see where what other things we need to take care of. And if I remember right, four issues were a metering thing out in the middle of the front yard, mm -hmm. which I believe has been addressed by the latest plans. Uh, the question of the driveway width, which I see the chief is here, and we've had some discussions earlier today with people to, for us to, for me to more understand that issue. And we had screening with the neighbor, which is right here, I believe. So hopefully that we can talk about. And then we had the last little bit of stormwater type stuff. And since our last meeting, Conservation Commission has ordered a, given an order of conditions. And so they have said where they can relocate it. So let's talk about all those and then we'll get, get onto things with it. So if we talk about the meter pad location, uh, why don't you pull a set of drawings out? So that <coughs> sure. Okay. This is the uh, set of drawings that is currently for the board. What we had talked about originally was uh, a meter cluster here about uh, 20 feet from the pavement at Hayden Row Street. We had proposed moving it 10 to 15 feet back to try and accomplish that. 
um, the idea of, of taking out of the sight lines of the neighbor and creating some kind of uh, agreement on that location. We have since modified our viewpoint and now our metering cluster is back here. 26.6 from the boundary, well outside the 25-foot uh, minimum for zoning. We're about 150 feet from the pavement at Hayden Row Street now. So we've so gone from 20 to 150. We got a, a memo from uh, the zoning enforcement uh, officer that basically said it's got to be within the setback. So I, unless anyone else has any objection, I think this closes out that one. Okay, so we got one down. Let's take let's take let's uh, let's take on screening next. We took to heart the uh, input from uh, Beta with the screening. As you may recall, we had a line of uh, evergreen shrubs at both corners, north and south side. We have staggered those same number of shrubs, but in a pattern that will help fill in those sight lines at um, both locations and those show up on the um, site designs that were submitted for this evening. Miguel has gone uh, on his own to develop a list of uh, plant screening materials that could be substituted for the original materials that were called out on that plan. And I'll let Miguel speak to, uh, to those types. So we had proposed the Aborvidae, but there was a lot of negative commentary about uh, deer damage to them so we did a little research and proposed uh, three species that uh, uh, came recommended as um, good screening material good growth uh, deer proof etc uh, in meeting with the neighbors we have selected the American holly as well as a juniper it's also called a west eastern red cedar so we're going to use these to screen on both sides um, and added to this per conversations with the neighbors we're going to add an additional number of trees right here seven trees that are not shown on plan one neighbor suggested additional screening and we agreed to that we're going to use the uh, 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 the juniper in that location seven additional trees right there Was for enhanced screening concern expressed that from the back deck of this home they could see right through into that. So that's the reason for the additional seven trees, seven, eight feet on center, about 50 foot is the number voiced out in the hallway. That'll close up that gap. Question. I just want to, if I can sure. add the existing landscape there, which there is brush there, will remain in place, but we're adding additional screening in order to suffice or satisfy the neighbors as well. Just making it denser. Correct. It, it is the north side, so it doesn't. Does it have a growth potential without dying off with the existing um, ground cover the way it is right now? So, yes, uh, the juniper grows aggressively. It's about a two, one to two foot of growth per year. Part of our maintenance plan, we're going to be there pruning them as needed. Uh, how, how big are these trees when they're planted? They're seven foot. We're going to buy seven foot tall junipers. Okay. That was that was one of my questions. How big are they? I know on the plan it says seven feet, and so I just want to make sure that the seven additional trees will they be located on the plan? So that you, you're saying you're going to add seven trees. I just want to make sure that we'll they're on the final on the plan. plan right along here. Okay, seven foot on center. Okay, we we get into on trouble if, if we don't have the. They're going to be on a line in that case. In that case, they're going to be on the line. right along here because there's already okay. existing okay. vegetation. Are, are the neighbors happy with the, the screening at this point? Seven foot bush is short. We just spoke about it building it up to a burn. You've got to get it up to nine, ten feet before it's going to have any effect, immediate effect. So, along this particular side of the property, we're going to build a two foot tall berm okay. and place the junipers there. So, that buys us another two feet of height. The junipers are seven foot. They're estimated to grow 13 to 24 inches per year. Yeah. So the expectations is at the end of the year one, we're at about 11 feet of height. Okay. Nine foot of, nine foot of tree and two foot of burn. Correct. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. You're in a putter. Yeah. Yes. I love that. 
The north. And we had requested that additional 50 feet of screening at that northwest corner to extend on the north side um, because that is our line of sight from our backyard. Okay, and you're reasonably happy at this point? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, let's just talk about it quick. Planning board members reasonably happy with this accommodations? Okay. And if I may, for the chair, I'm glad that. You've been really responsive to their well, thank you. But, we're, we're, but we, we have we have a minor problem. If we're going to <laughs> approve this today, we will probably not take the vote until Mr. Markinot goes out in the halls and puts a, a sketch of what's going to go into that area. A very nice sketch that would allow us to approve that as one of the the records. In, that will allow that to, to, to go forward uh, with with what it is. So we'll, we'll keep going, and we'll try to get everything resolved, and then we'll figure out a way to maybe get it approved. <laughs> <laughs> or does he already have a sketch? Seven trees. I want seven no, trees. No, I don't have one yet. Nope. All right. All right. We're going we're to we're allow, we're going to kind of do these things. We'll, we'll probably continue it a little later tonight. <coughs> allow him to come up with this sketch and names of the trees, the berm, all the, the, the height of the trees, all that good stuff so that quantity, uh, quantity and the whole bit. So at the end of the day, come this fall, we'll know whether or not they built it like they said they were going to build it. And so Okay. So now we, we've got screening 90% taken care of. Actually, 98%. Um, let's talk about the roadways, the driveway width, because we got the chief here, and he, he got out of the out of the <coughs> fire today, I guess. And uh, so, from what I understand, and I didn't bring the section of the building code I, that is there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There, there is a section that, quite frankly, I think is is not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I yeah, I've got it here. Okay. So, I think it's going to have a major impact on on how things are built in around the Commonwealth. <laughs> as, as a guy that sits on the Water Resources Commission, I'm sure the water side of, of the Commonwealth does not like this idea at all because it will add to a significant amount of impervious surface. It kind of says that if your front door is more than 50 feet from the road, you've got to have a 20-foot driveway at least to 50 feet in, inside your house. So if we look at our agricultural district, district and I'm, I'm digressing just a little bit that where we have a setback of 60 feet that means that every opening in a stone wall would have to be 20 feet wide uh, I can understand some of it on the roadways and particularly going around legacy and, and I the roadways where we've done a lot of 18 footers previously I can kind of I can see that here individual homes I personally don't necessarily see it, but that is not what the code says. And, uh, you know, oh, oh, you can exempt yourself if you sprinkle your house, I believe, too. So it's a backdoor way of trying to get everyone's houses sprinkled. I'd rather, if, if that's the goal, I'd rather have the code just say sprinkle everyone's houses uh, rather than mess around with 20-foot wide driveways. I mean, nobody wants a 20-foot driveway going up to their house. I and uh, and I'm very confident that if my house starts to burn, the chief and the fire department is going to have an easy enough time to get down my 10-foot driveway and, uh, and, and and come and rescue me. But that's that's my problem. Uh, so we're we're stuck with a 20-foot width road there. It's kind of what it is now, but I'm not sure it's the most desirable thing to do. The only other option might be is to 
do the center part in gravel and then do some kind of uh, build up on the the, 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 the the pavers that have the grass going up through it on, on two other sides. That would be the only other option that you could do to, to make it better and meet the code, as I, as, as I see it. So it, is it existing now at 25 feet? Is that what we're talking? It's it's about that. I didn't measure it, but it's, it's pretty it's wide. Existing it is. What's that? Existing at the opening is 25 feet. Correct. Yep. Yep. And what Ken is trying to say is that we reduce it down to... No, we, we, we cannot reduce it below 20 feet because somehow we have to get a big fire truck back to these panels. I, I also have a problem with these panels being a, a facility and covered by this. Just quite frankly, it's not like somebody's going to burn. I mean, the panels, if they start a grass fire, I'm sure on the peninsula today we didn't have any 20-foot roads going down there. Maybe that was causing a big problem with that. But uh, There's a master switch for this all to be shut down anyway, right? Uh, yeah. So if, even if there were a fire, an electrical fire chief, then everything would be shut down immediately anyway, right? Well, the, uh, I'll let them speak to the panel some. It all depends on where you isolate them. Um, there's usually some live component at all times. And that's happening right here. Up front. Yeah. Well, it's in the property, in the back of the property, at the it's front it's part of the solar field. Right. It's, it's not by down. the street. I see. Somebody could cut the wires at the street, too, if they wanted to. But but the, the, the panels are still going to... be because The sun is shining. If, the, if it's daytime, it's <laughs> live. <laughs> They're it's live. <laughs> Even when you shut them, even so when, when you, yeah. so when the the panels have an inverter located at the ends of the rows, and you can shut the DC power there, but that means that the power that is flowing from the inverter to the transformer will be shut down, not the power that's being generated from, from the fields the to the inverter. That is still live as long as it's daytime. If it's nighttime, well, there's no problem there, but that wire being direct current is going to be live while the sun is hitting it. Isn't, isn't there, and this is just out of um, ineptness or understanding, isn't there a way to close the panel facings so that the light can't produce any electricity? Short of a blanket or something like that, there isn't. What about one. flappers? They uh, don't. They yeah. don't. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to redesign a, a, a solar system. I'm just trying to say, you know, in, a, in an event of a, of a catastrophe of some sort or a fire or, or whatever, you just isolate the area and let it burn. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean. So to get back to the, the yeah. I guess, is, is the original question: How wide should the driveway be? By code, it has to be 20 feet. And and last time I remember, it was I remember thinking it was too wide, and then they were. Uh, we all thought it was too wide. Mm -hmm. It was on this side of the table, but we got pointed out what the code is. Mm -hmm. And the code, I believe, has changed in the last year and a half. And according to the building inspection department, that they have just read the code about maybe three or four months ago. So they're now aware of what the code is. That's why Legacy North has got 20-foot driveways throughout it. Uh, we so, saw so that on Ash Street also. But for this project, as a person who was feeling before that the driveway is too wide, are we recommending or asking that the driveway be 20 feet wide and still, are we still asking that? Uh, That's what it is. There, to, to 25. Uh, only at the existing area. The entrance. The entrance. Uh, what, what we did in the meantime since our last meeting was to shift this driveway down to a 12 foot wide driveway. That's what's on the plans now. We abandoned that wider okay. driveway that we had originally. We were enlightened this morning as to the code so we have a sketch that reintroduces a 20-foot wide driveway through the reconfigured gate location. So we can get a 20-foot wide driveway to fit with the relocated panels, relocated gate that meets that minimum side yard setback. We can maintain the 20-foot all the way through. Now, you don't have to go 20 feet all the way to the gate. You need to go to 20 feet to 50 feet of the gate. Correct? Sure. Yeah. To, to your point, there's a stretch to the facility and the front door and the pieces, which I'm listening for. Yeah. And um, I think the 
piece that Miguel first offered meets the intent of the code, so that's why I just said let's not shrink the intent of the code unless you had a reason to do so. So I, I haven't heard the reason to do so yet that we would look for some type of an exception. Well, I think Mr. Perkins was going to want to probably park on that driveway too, which probably, I, you know, you're, you've got to live in it. Uh, yeah, or, or rent it one or the other. But whatever. Yeah, I can make a parking area that's uh, some, uh, next to that. Or okay. It can be, you know, I'm, I'm flexible on what you want to make that out of. It doesn't have to be paid. So, so a question for clarity yep. through the chair. Sure, go ahead. Uh, we're previous meeting was 25 feet, and it's an call fee. Now we're hearing 20 feet is the recommendation. And Whatever variation in it, it's okay with the bill. 20 feet seems to be a good consensus for all sides. That no, that's what the code requires. No, it's not a consensus. But, so. I, you know, it's consensus that you, you can do it 20 feet the whole way. That's not a hardship or anything on them. And it's, they wanted it bigger to begin with, so it's, it's, it's uh, okay. I mean, it should not be an issue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, question, yeah. Ken. You were saying. How far back is the door? Is the gate the street? It's about well, 150, I think. No, 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 the door to the home, I guess. Is no, no, no. You talking about the no, door the to facility. This is to find the facility is yeah. a solar array. Oh, okay. So I would assume that the door is the front gate. Okay, so that's 150 feet. So that's how far it needs to be at 20 feet wide. It needs to be 20 feet to up to 50 feet from the door. So we could have 90 foot. Give a. a 20. Lesser width, and then balloon out to 20 foot at that point. That's no, 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 no. You got yeah, the other way around. 20 feet from the street. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. And then you can narrow it down. in the last yeah, 50 feet if you Correct. wanted to. Yeah. But and, and the piece you would add, and I'm not sure of the length. If it if it ran over 150 feet, you need to make some form of area that the apparatus can turn around in, which Miguel provided a plan for me that right. showed that clear ability to do that, which is that keeps us from having to back out into Route 85, so that he's done a great job with that. Yeah. That's when the hammerhead, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> when you put the lights on, you, you can go anywhere you want, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I do. Then hit the siren, then you're all set. <laughs> okay. I think we go with 20 foot on the plan, yeah. and, and this will be also another little sketch that you'll have for us. He's got that right there. Okay. And we'll sign it and date it. We got it dated. Okay. So we're okay in the driveway width. As much as I, Don't to me, it. it doesn't make any sense, but that's lots of things that. The planning board and my wife make me do don't make any sense. So. <laughs> Are we taped tonight? No, She's we not are. Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, sidewalks. I'm going down the line. I oh. just threw that out there. Do we envision sidewalks on both sides of Hayden Row at any point? The school, or are we thinking just one side's fine? I think if the sidewalks on the other side. I think right now. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just, I'm fine with that. I, w I would. I think you're okay. Can I can I do yeah. that again, please? Um, you're asking that both sides be sidewalked, right? The question was if we were going to eventually sidewalk both sides, this would be an opportunity to start on it. But it sounds like that's not in the plan. Anymore, sounds so. it sounds like one house out of a whole bunch. Yeah, I yeah. don't think right. there's no sidewalk in Makes front sense. of any of the other homes at this right. point. Right. Makes sense. Yep. We had a question of the effect on Davenport. I think we determined that. You can't oh, see it the that well, mm -hmm. so it is it is yeah. adequately yeah. screened. Are you yeah. familiar with that glare off of those panels during a bright sunny day at all? I know traveling uh, the pike, I've seen the glare off of those panels. They're positioned in the wrong way. Or? So the panels that we use are FAA approved to be used on airports. Okay. Uh, there is no glare. Gla off. The the uh, coefficient uh, is two point three. The average window out of any type of building out there is in the sevens. This is a glare proof. Again, the best uh, uh, statement that I can offer is that these panels are allowed to be used by the FAA near airports. Okay. 
There's no glare issue there. Okay. And you're not putting an airport in there, right? Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, <phase two>. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> uh, we're getting a little time constraint, guys. They warm uh, up. That's that they, they do. Yeah. That okay. allows them to melt okay. the, the snow. Let's let's try to get through here. If not, we're gonna. Uh, Upper Charles uh, Trail Commission request you were looking at if there's a possibility to get through here if I look at the plans there's there's not enough room to get through there and you'd be right next to a bunch of people's houses and you're into the wetland too so let's close that one out Conservation Commission they you've already got it modified to their liking so that's Correct. closed this one. stormwater management uh, did we have anything left in the beta letter? There was some um, entrance to it. There was a couple items I think I talked quickly. Uh, most, most of the comments were well. There was one response we just questioned, which was a TSS response. And it was the content, the comment seemed to be a little different. It was answered anyway. Um, and from a TSS standpoint, we just don't expect any issues. Yeah, it was comment number one in the stormwater. Okay, yeah. so so basically we're stormwater wise we're closed. Yes. Great. Okay, so we've gone through all the details. Uh, public comment. Um, <clears throat> anyone from the public have anything more to say on this one? Okay, and we're also going to talk about the permit standards and revisions that need to be done. We we'll refer you to. Jennifer's memo, page, page two, I think. Okay, well, this is, this is both of it. Uh, the uh, special permit for the uh, photovoltaic uh, installation. I believe we we can find that. Uh, it conforms to the article and all the dimensional requirements. Uh, the commercial will not be detrimental to the neighborhood of the town, and if there's questions of that, please raise your voices. Uh, environmental features of the site and surrounding areas are protected, and uh, particularly protected by use of adequate surface water uh, drainage. And that the grant of the special permit will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. And we have a couple of special permits for that that Jennifer has put on the bottom of page three. First one has to do with vegetative planting, it will be completed concurrently with the installation of the facility, unless if it's during the winter, it's for the next growing season. Solar farm will be constructed substantially in conformance. I don't like the word substantially. Uh, but other than that, with the conditions that we're giving, Director of Municipal Inspections will have be able to inspect it. And if you need some expertise, the applicant will pay for it. The stormwater uh, pollution prevention plan will be provided prior to commencement of construction. We'll have a, a decommissioning place in, as long as it is located and planned. Uh, performance bond is in a paragraph. Did we, did we determine what the value of that should be? It, it's, it was stated in there that, that it should be the amount of, of, uh, of the deconstruction of it, right? Equal to the estimated cost to remove all components of the facility. <coughs> so we have this issue come up on every ground mount solar project. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we use the tables that we use, which are installed with screws in the ground. Mm -hmm. TerraSmart, the manufacturer of these racking, has a six foot six screw that goes into the ground. <coughs> The reason we use that is that we can unscrew it from sure. the ground. The sure. entire um, installation is recyclable. Mm -hmm. uh, the glass in the panels is recyclable. 
the copper and the wire will be removed and it's recyclable. Basically everything is recyclable in this facility. So one of the reasons we use this racking. If, so to if, the decommis if, decommissioning. If, if you were going to take this thing out, what's the value for a contract to take it out? Yeah, so I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but we've done that exercise before, so I can quickly put something tomorrow to send to you that states what the costs are associated with this today with an escalator. Well, we need it for we need it for the cost of the decision, and that should be. No, we only need it when he is to pull the permit. To pull the permit. Okay. He doesn't need to provide that bond until he's ready to pull the permit, and so when he gets ready to pull the permit, he'll come in with that bond. Okay. And we'll review the okay. cost. Okay. Okay. And basically, no signage, I believe, is kind of what that really says. How do we collaborate with the the cost if he gives us an estimate? We'll yeah. find it from somebody else. We'll, we'll find it. Maybe. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, item eight, uh, uh, which is basically says you can't uh, do vegetation control. No uh, herbicides. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, only in the hours of those. I, th I think you want to echo the the noise bylaw article, which is. Monday through Saturday, and there's certain hours to that, and not on holidays. For construction? For, for, for construction and for maintenance. Oh, okay, of course, yeah, yeah. So I, I would, I'd like to interrupt a second and yep. go back to number seven. Okay. Uh, we do ha post signage on the fence at every 70 or 80 feet. Yes. That that's, is, that's warning. Yes, that, that's fine. All right. Setbacks, yeah. Uh, setbacks is nine, ten. Security fences will be set back. Uh, no lighting. Nope. Uh, and I guess it, I, I was going to say access on, on 12 access driveways, but roads will work because we're 20 feet wide. <laughs> the uh, and then director. Of municipal inspections can determine whether or not it's been discontinued. Oh, and then and then we have one on noise that'll be number fourteen. Are there any comments, questions, consideration of those fourteen? Have you seen this number fourteen? Noise. Can I keep this copy? Yeah. yeah. Noise basically says that you can't hear it at, at the border, I believe. Correct. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So that's got it on the yep right, and then so that's got it for the special permits for the actual system by itself. Second is the stormwater management permit. Uh, that starts on page seven. Are there any questions on that? It goes seven, eight, nine. Are there any, you guys read through all that, I assume, during yes, the day. Yeah. Do you, do you have any problem with any of that? Nope. Anyone else have any? Mr. Problem? Chairman, they're not. They're not building anything. It's just basic runoff, right? Correct. Correct. Well, there is there is a uh, yeah. detention pond. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And Thank some you. swales. No change in the existing it's basic runoff. It is right, <laughs> and it's clean runoff. Yes. So we've got conditions on that. As it's in there. So going down the eye outline, we talked about the conditions of approval. Any public comment? Seeing none. Um, Let's go through the votes before we close the public hearing here. I'd entertain a motion to find that we meet the criteria. It's listed on page two um, of, the, of, the, of Jennifer's memo. And the motion would be that we, we meet the criteria and issue and then the second motion will be to issue the permit with conditions. I motion both parts of that. 
Good. Wow, that's efficient. Good. I move both parts of that. Okay. Second. Okay, let's... <laughs> uh, yes, both parts. Okay. So the first motion is finding that meets the criteria. Subject... Oh, wait a second. What do we... We still yeah. have the plan. We have the trees, yeah. though. We have the tree plan coming up. Yeah. So I, we should... We, we we'll continue? Con we'll continue this at this point till nine thirty. We'll take you to draw plans. Nine thirty. I move that we cable this until nine thirty. Yep. Continue the public hearing till nine thirty. I think. Let me let yeah, me let yeah, me make sure. We're, let me get my agenda here. It's eight fifteen. Yeah. We got we got nine thirty. Okay. Okay. We'll see you guys a little bit Thanks, later. Guys. Okay. Can we get the vote on the account of the table? Yes, we have a vote on the table. Uh, all those in favor of uh, tabling this until 9.30? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. See you guys back a little bit later. Okay, next item on the thing, and we're running late again. Is, is anyone from the legacy folks out there? I bet you they are. Boy, oh boy. What? Quick, come on up here. Hi, I'm Bruce Wheeler from Mazarinoff Woods. Chuck yep. Joseph is with me. We have a revised uh, landscaping plan that went through uh, site plan approval and. Um, Chuck's going to pre present um, the revised part. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, as you requested uh, a while back that we take this before design review, make sure we get their approval before we come back. We've done that. We have their approval. Um, I think you have a copy of the plan. I hope you have a copy of the plan. Uh, the primary changes that, that were recommended by Copley Wolf, which was the original uh, landscape design company, was that the original plan actually had too much vegetation between the buildings and that it was not going to survive. We only have a 35-foot distance between the buildings. We've redesigned that. Uh, at design review level, That those plantings were up towards the front of the building. They asked that we shift those further back so that the decks would eventually have privacy from one another, et cetera. Uh, we made that change, and that's demonstrated on the plan that you have in front of you. Um, other than that, there's minor changes here and there behind the first three buildings on your left as you enter into that. There was a lot of vegetation that was to be planted. Uh, in fact, when we ended up clearing the site and Copley Wolf got out there, it, there was no room for it. And we're right <coughs> up against the undergrowth of pines that already exist there, and so the, the buffer the buffer is already existing. It would, be, it would be redundant and silly and no room to put these additional pines. So that's the gist of where we are now, and we we'll certainly welcome any comments that you guys have. Are there any abutters concerns on this? Uh, I'm a butter, and I just spoke with Bruce and Chuck about the plan and addressed my concerns. It's mostly around just head, headlights, I think, between the bank, uh, the trees that, um, that were damaged. Don't really provide much screening, anyways, even though they're tall, it's just kind of a shaft uh, that they're proposing. To have a little latitude to adapt to the site, we'll be fine. So you're you're uh, you're comfortable with the plan as you present? Yeah. Okay. For yeah. my own benefit, is this Gun Street? No, this no. is uh, West, West Main. West, West Main, Main Street. West, uh, West Main. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. okay. okay. Kind of right. Yep. 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 I know where it is. Right at the corner. Right, right overlooking the water. The water. Yes. Right near the water. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Water's all down in here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other comments? First thing we have to do, yep, Frank. Clarification uh, in the letter. Uh, the current plan that, that we have here, you're saying that's acceptable with, with the plantings that you see on the plan? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's acceptable. The proposed one is also, there's, you know, not the actual construction has taken place. There's been some things that happen just as far as the location of some of the older trees where they were damaged. Mm -hmm. um, I just spoke to uh, Bruce and Chuck, 
my concern was not so much those trees in particular, but just where the uh, existing screening gets kind of thin. That I don't, I don't want to pick up headlights. There's an old driveway that runs uh, through there. That's uh, it's on the first plan. I don't think it's shown on the second plan. Um, but where they're talking about having some some latitude for some screening plantings behind. I think it was behind some of those first trees, right, Chuck? Yes. So on, on this map, from what you're saying, I don't see additional screening on the north west corner of, of, of the plot. Can you? Uh, if I may, Mr. Mr. Chairman. North yeah. East. Okay. Well, yeah, north, 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 north west. Yeah, my north east. If you notice on the right hand side of the road coming in, there are five large street trees that are going to be planted there. Behind there, some of that vegetation that's noted in the original plan is more of a more of a shrubbery, mm -hmm. and we're proposing right. to John that we would install some uh, some evergreens behind there to act as a screen to make sure that none of the headlights he's, he's get through right. towards so, his so property. Ba so basically, that's in addition to what you're seeing on this plan? Some of it may be in place of these shrubs, that the shrubs may not do the job. So then basically we're saying is you're not going to build to this plan that you got tonight? No, we're, to this plan. That's one of the revisions. That's right. Is, so this plan that we have here is what we're show, shows the evergreens? Yes. Are you all looking, there was a plan in front of you tonight that was more recently updated. Are you all looking at that one? Yes. Okay. okay. The one that's online? No. The one that's on the table? Okay. The one that was on the table. Yeah. Yeah. I and might have another one in it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's the, that's the latest that and greatest. Was, mm -hmm. That was sent to okay. this afternoon. Okay. And that's the plan Mr. Mosier is happy with. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's first of all, just want to check here. This yeah, this is the same, same one. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then this is, yeah, this is the Sorry. corner right in here where okay. it's kind of thin. First yeah. thing the board members need to find this is, is this a minor administrative change? We talking about using Does anyone have a problem with this not be, uh, that that we're on being a minor administrative yeah. change yeah. at this point? Okay. So, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the substitution of the, this latest landscaping plan with what was originally uh, approved by the board. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Aye. Chairman. Sure. Appreciate time. it. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hello. Got some sun, did you? I did. <laughs> this weekend, yeah. Spent some time with the fields. Good for you. Okay. Everyone is here. We're going to reopen the um, public hearing for the Northeast, Northwest, and North Club villages at Legacy Farms. This is the application for site plan review. Um, the two amendments to the master plan special permit. I would request that we continue those two things until. To July 11th, which are the next meeting at 8:45. Uh, so, I entertain a motion to continue the two two special permit changes to July 11th at 8:45. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Just, just to follow up on that, we did receive an email today that we should have a peer review midweek this week for the. So this is the peer review on the. LMG uh, study that's going on and as soon as we get that we're going to give it to the fire chief and then the first thing we do at 845 on that day is we'll, we'll talk about LMG and if, hopefully the chief can make that date and uh, that would be 
great. And then at that point we can move, I think, forward, or hopefully forward on, on everything. Okay, so we've gotten through an awful lot of stuff the last last hearing. Um, and we're going to make a, a lot of progress yet tonight for the next hour and a bunch of minutes. Um, let's see. So let's see where were we? Where are we going to pick up? I think we're picking up on construction management plan. Uh, I met with representatives of Pulte and Mr. McDowell earlier in this week with Jennifer and Elaine. Uh, where are you on some of the revisions we talked about, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Um, so since that meeting. Uh, we, um, John and Matt from Bowler and, and my team, have been reviewing and going through all the comments that we heard, uh, and we've um, and we've adjusted and we've responded to those and we've updated the construction management plan, and we've and we're circulating it internally okay. uh, in our office because um, you know the the construction management plan is a serious document. It's uh, very comprehensive. Uh, one of the things, you know, that, well, one, one of the items in here is that certain uh, departments in our company need to sign off. Um, you asked for both, um, you know, vertical construction folks and, and land development folks and, and myself and Reed. So, um, you know, we're, we're vetting it internally and we're making sure that it addresses all of the concerns that we've heard and responds to all of the concerns that it, um, people have commented about. And, and also, um, we're also making sure that it works for us too and making sure that we don't make commitments that you know, we can't comply with. So it's, it, we need to find a balance and, and that's what we're doing right now. And, and okay, so, we, and so we'll, we'll get it to the board okay. in a very short time frame. I'm, I'm thinking later this week, the latest. Okay, that would be great. So we'll, we'll skip over construction management plan for tonight. I, I think that's a, a better approach than trying to go through. They already heard what my comments were, and they were, I'm going to say, significant in parts, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so, if we skip over construction management plan, um, we had steep slopes on streets and yards. Are there alternatives? Fencing at detention ponds. And I'm trying to remember how that all got together. Previous Must have been somebody, some member of the board or somebody kind of put that one through there. Let's take this steep slopes. I think we talked about that either in the introduction or we talked about it maybe the previous hearing where our three new members have, might not have heard much about that. If I remember right, slope wise, what was the maximum street? 7%, I believe. 7%. That was our maximum using anywhere we did we did discuss that yeah and, and, I, and I think kind of along with that there was also on all your streets you you've got curbing so that some of the problems we've had with seven degree slopes in trying to set up I mean I, I see that just lately the, the DPW has been on Ash Street which is got some very steep spots is, is adding curbing to it. It's a, I won't say it's all 100% curved yet, but every year they seem to add another two or 300 feet somewhere along the street. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with, with uh, the stormwater requirements are now such that you can't, you can't put silt and stuff that comes off the side of the road into our stormwater drains. And they're, they're, the nifties permit and everything else like that has gotten a lot tougher on that and I sense that that's some of their response to that of loading up storm drains with the, with stuff so okay uh, are there alternatives I'm not sure what we go on that I think the board members were comfortable with the layout of the streets pretty much I know we walked it we did understand the slope 
on the one area particularly. Fencing at detention ponds. Uh, we typically haven't asked for that at one point uh, anywhere, and I think most of these are, are shallow. shallow and supposed to dry up in between every storm within uh, within two days, I believe. It's supposed to be so there's no mosquitoes. So it's this, there are certain towns that do require fences around detention ponds. I'm not sure that what we ha we as a board have not found them to be necessary in the past. Yeah, I agree. If they dry up, I don't see a need for the fences. Well, if they're doing a purpose, then it's yeah. fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so are there any public comments to this issue? Seeing none, let's just check the fence, that one off. Um, lessons learned from Legacy Farms Road South. I think we've kind of done this throughout here, but more screening, the cul-de-sacs, the curbs, more detailed construction plans. I think we're in the process of implementing most of those mm -hmm. items. Uh, is there, planning board members, have any more discussion you want to have in that area? The Anywhere? effort to make distinct community uh, neighborhoods uh, helps. Uh, I think that approaching it a little bit differently. The south side is distinct with apartments and duplexes and single mixed in together, but it's. I, I think uh, the layout and your designs are more on point for the north side. So thank you. And I think, you know, some of the screening aspect, particularly screening along, I'll say Legacy Farms Road is significantly better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyone else will have any comments on, on, on lessons learned? Okay. Uh, affordable housing units to the project. This got added in anticipation of the 180 getting approved in the future. As I think most people know, affordable units in over 55 don't work because nobody qualifies for, for the affordable units that are over 55 that can afford to buy something in, in this area. So we left that in, and we're going to have to, I think, be creative. It'll certainly be a condition of the master plan special permit changes, and it probably should be in the site plan that 18 units would be designated as affordable within this 400 and whatever. Roy? Well, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> the, way, the way the uh, plan was designed originally in 3 2, the, the only affordable out of these nine, 940 units were the 240 units in the uh, lip. You know, nothing that. So there's really no requirement to have affordable in the 425. There is a requirement to have affordable 10% in the 180 units. And there is a market for it. It's just more difficult to sell them, but you, you can do it. There are other projects that have done it. So ideally, we'd like to keep the affordable in the 180 units, the 10% that was part of the, z the zoning, if you will, and, and not have it adversely affect the units. I, I brought that up with members of the state, with the housing people I sat with, was on one of the boards, and they basically say there's no there's nobody that can meet those 18 units. Mr. I, Chairman, I, 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 Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, first I'd just like to say that that condition or that requirement imposed on this specific application of 425 homes would be a serious concern to us. So um, I, we're aware of the 10% requirement that came with the zoning for the 180 uh, age-restricted homes, um, but that would that would cause great problems for us on, on this application, which is completely separate for that. Okay. But, but specifically for the age-restricted affordables, we have, we have um, two projects currently, my company, Pulte Homes, that are age-restricted in this location. One is in Acton. It's called Quail Ridge. It has an afford. It's an age-restricted community. It has an affordable component, 
and we have marketed and sold and um, all of the all of the um, DHCD affordable units there and we have another active community in Holliston right now which is age restricted and that has a 10% affordable factor and we're um, we're successfully marketing and, and selling those homes now as well. Um, we also have a couple other age restricted projects in the pipeline that have a, an affordable component and our company has done our due diligence on those jobs and that's not a, um, a factor for us in moving forward with a project. Uh, we're comfortable that there is a market. It's difficult. That's, that's clear. Uh, it, it's harder. But um, for somebody who knows how to do it and knows how to, to market it, um, you know, people can, can do it and, and, it, and it can happen. So uh, those are just some of the experiences that we've had recently in this area. Well, I would suggest that maybe you provide more information on that subject to us as to where you're at and how you're going to do it. Because for me, to vote on the 180, and that's not our subject tonight, unless I'm convinced that affordable can be done in that 180, you're going to have one no vote for sure. Because we've got to have our 10%. Or maybe we put some more conditions on it that if they, you know, the problem we have with affordable units on individual sold is they get turned back into regular units really quick. The, res <coughs> the rental units, I have no problem at all figuring out how to do it. But I'll tell you, we, we, have, we have a couple of other age restricted. We got rid of that zoning at our last town meeting because we can't enforce it. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you know, one of the ways you enforce it is we put a restriction on the property. So it's in the condominium documents in perpetuity of those units are age restricted. So it isn't like you can come back and change it. It is what it is. Those are registry needs. Well, from what we're hearing at Sanctuary, well, those are just affordables being lost. They weren't age restricted, but there's been one or two over on the development of Lumber Street that was age senior house, you know, age restricted housing, and we're losing them off the list. But again, I think that depends on how it was documented. Those are probably old parts. Yeah, those, those deed riders are older. Yeah, so, so those expired. probably weren't documented properly. But the ones that are documented properly today, uh, you you can't do that. It's illegal. We'd be happy to get the documentation. I can get our lawyers to give you copies of the documents to show you that okay. you be should be very be, be more prepared for that for the 180 Thanks. vote. Because I'm very confident we can satisfy you with 180. The question through the chair. Yeah. Um, I like what you said. I have followed it. Um, but uh, just for clarification, we are looking at Lexi Farm North and then the additional project of 180. It's separate projects mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. separate processes yeah, separate. and separate. Um, so in light of that, a certain portion is meant to be affordable uh, under our, our bylaws, is, and we had a certain limit. Once we hit that limit, we can have a little bit more uh, flexibility. And I'm just kind of wondering where we stand with, I'm thinking we're assuming that still there's so no. many units on the north side yeah. that are affordable. No, they, no, no, no. None of these are. They satisfied the affordable the units with the four hundred or two hundred and forty uh, apartments. Mm -hmm. So what you said, two separate projects. Yeah, this this project does not have an affordable requirement because the Legacy Farms sure. master plan had an affordable component, which was completely satisfied by the sure. apartments. Sure. So the age restricted, which was rezoned a year or two ago, has an affordable component for the extra units above and beyond the 900 or 940, but that's that's a future application that you know, Roy and, and, here, a, no. and, a, and an applicant will come in. Just a point of clarity, future. for the 240 apartments you're referencing that it's satisfied with, where, where, what are we talking about exactly? Those are on, on the south side. On the south, south side, okay. it's the um, wood park okay. yep. development. Yep. Oh. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, under the, it's called the LIP program, the Local Initiative Program, uh, when you do rental apartments, when 25% of the apartments are affordable, all the apartments count towards your town's number. So those apartments are 240 units, 60 of them are affordable, then all 240 units count towards the town's numbers for affordability. That's huge. And, and that's why we got over our 10% goal that from the state, huge. between that and the views. 
plus all these other little cats and dogs that we wouldn't get there. I understand the point being made, but that seems weird, though, that the other 75%. That, that's the way it's done. It's an inducement by the state, so you can do it. Yeah. It's lots of things that the state puts forward don't make any okay. sense. Great. Thanks. I just wasn't sure where you were referencing, but so. Okay. Well, we'll talk a lot more about that when we talk about the special permit for the 180. Because I guess I'm from Missouri on that subject. Okay, solar, solar items. I uh, think, Frank, you added yes. that? 2016, guys. Um, we had the same discussions about the south side when I was on the Conservation Commission. Um, I know it's up to the developers to build them. And, and, um, uh, I would like to see solar panels on these roofs. It's, um, you wouldn't build a house without plumbing or electricity. The 2016 electrical systems put solar panel on the roof. It helps uh, cut down on oil and, and have a greener. Uh, you're replacing farmland and you're you'd like to do it in a green way. Um, any kind of feedback, any kind of thinking on this from, you, from, you, from your side? Uh, it's been on our list for a while. Or, yeah. Yeah, we have every once in a while we have homeowners that approach the condominium and they ask for approval to, to put solar on their roofs. Um, and the condominium, the Legacy Farms condominium, has created a, um, a solar guidance document. Essentially, it's a, a, it's a um, solar Info design guide. guidelines of, that we provide to our homeowners that provide um, a framework of the design of the solar system that they can choose to put on their homes if they so, so, so when, they're, when they're buying their homes, they have that option that they can add it on. That's right. They can. Mr. Chairman. So the builder does not provide solar systems. That's something that we don't do across the board, but if a homeowner wants to pursue that option, that is available to them. Well, I'd like to see it if it has part of a more proactive plan. Actually, if I could I could elaborate a bit on that. So we actually have design guidelines, the project design guidelines for North and South. Mm -hmm. And we actually encourage people who want solar panels. We've actually had uh, a couple of homes approach us on doing solar panels. We've given them permission. We always do that. And uh, they're in the process <coughs> of permitting those now. So, 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 so we encourage it when someone wants to do it. But when a new home or duplex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is selling for six, seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, ten thousand, twenty thousand for solar panels doesn't seem like much extra either to throw in from the builder or to, to charge extra for the, for the buyer. Um, and it's certainly the time to do it is when the building's being built, not after the fact. Yeah. I, I guess just to be honest, uh, $10,000-$20,000 is a significant amount of money that uh, that we could not afford to throw in. I can, can assure everybody of that. But um, actually, you can build the building that uh, the solar system that they put in, that they're putting in all over the place. You know, they put them up on their roofs and then they, they, they wire them and they throw the conduit down and they just put the sub-panel right next to the regular panel. That can be done all externally and, and it doesn't really have any effect on the initial construction. Um, sure. So that's Is, if I look at the overall plan, maybe 20% of the homes might be oriented to the fact that they could even get a solar panel on? Well, the question I had, Mr. Chairman, is do your guidelines, do you suggest front and back or just any thoughts about whether it's visible or not? Because I know there's some mixed feelings about having them on the front of a house versus the back of a house where you can't see well, them. Ideally, you want to have a southern exposure. Uh, I know that, yes. Yeah, I think it really, it's really a case-by-case -case basis. And getting to uh, the point of the availability really depends on a, a customer. I mean, some customers don't like them aesthetically. Some like them because of the functionality. So I think, I think the best way to have it is to have the option available to a potential homeowner who chooses to do it, because that's a conscious choice on their part. 
Sure. It's a conscious choice for the upfront. But the, the guidelines, I was just wondering, do you, it's, it's either front or back, you don't limit it? Can, can you it first? can be either, because yeah. you, you yeah, have to locate them where it maximizes the sun and it maximizes the efficiency. Can, can, so that's can you provide a set of these guidelines to the board? Okay. Sure. Okay, yeah. quick question, yeah. and this is actually, yeah. I think first toward Frank, would you be satisfied with a strong marketing campaign? I would like to see some positive effort to have have these implemented. Um, it's, as I'm glad that there's some process, and um, it makes it easier for the new homeowners to uh, to implement this. Uh, I'm concerned about things like um, condo associations uh, bearing down and maybe not allowing uh, things to happen. Um, <coughs> And right now, this is an opportunity to, to maybe have uh, some sort of uh, exception where we, we note that condo associations have maybe no power to say no to solar. Uh, that, it's, that, it's, that's it's potentially a condition that could be implemented. But and let's see what their documents have. Sure. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned about putting undue burden on or a builder here. I mean, if you're giving the customer the option whether or not they want to put the solar panel on whenever they want to do it, not on the front end, they can do it on the back end or whenever. So I don't feel like these guys should be. Yeah, I, I think we've, I think we've gone away. I think we've gone away from that, right, a little bit. And and, and you're, what you're saying is is you're good that it's up front, and maybe sure. we word it into the into the end and predisposition of. If people want to have the solar panels on, they can they can without restriction get it in, get it installed. I'm saying it's in 2016. Builders should be building them on the roofs. 2026, everyone will be. It's, it's not going to be uh, if you don't build yeah. solar panels on a new building, no one's going to be yeah. interested. So that's interesting you say that. And just a personal, I mean, so I've had a system designed to my roof by two separate companies over the last two years, and I have not pulled the trigger, and I don't think I'm going to do it because I'm afraid that in five years from now, there's going to be something else Product. that's going to be Technology. twice as efficient, it's going to be twice as better aesthetically. But the time that passes, right. you don't get the benefit. But, but I'd hate to hinder all these roofs with these big onerous panels, and then two years from now, something else is going to come out. and. Um, that's just so as a personal thing. I mean, it's it's a it's a okay. it's a significant choice that a homeowner needs to make. So, I, I don't think that it should. I mean, in my own personal opinion, I don't think it should be a requirement. But I think that that the builder, the homeowner association, there should be some kind of a document so that the buyers know that it's available if they want it, and should <coughs> feel free to put it on there if they want to. But I don't think it should be a requirement um, placed upon the builder. Okay. Why don't you provide some documentation of what what you do yeah. in both the set, you know s send me your 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 spec sheet on if I want to buy a house or something you know and, and hopefully it's got solar panels with a spot where I can check it just like the optional fireplace or whatever else you know or upgrading yeah, so, the, the so, basement. So it's not that. Okay. Just to be clear, because you know we we don't build in solar panels. There are solar panel companies okay. that. Okay. But the option is there, is no, what you're saying. No, no, no. The no I think he's saying the this. option to pursue. Then a I guess I'm looking company. for whatever the guidance yeah, documents sure. that allow that to happen. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Do you also educate the homeowner as to any uh, possible problems in the future? Whose responsibility it would be versus would he be responsible for any repairs because of a problem with it, or is the homeowners association uh, they also made aware of that the, when they make yeah. this? The condominium has a very strong statute and. Um, we have the ability to, to ensure that the homeowner maintains his panels or the company maintains the panels. So that's one of the critical aspects of the document, that does the panels are maintained properly. Independently. Does, the does, does the condo association do the exterior of the buildings and the roof? Yes. So basically... Okay. The homeowners yeah, need okay. permission from the condo association to, to make any alteration to the exterior whatsoever okay. so, so we're back at that that original place what Frank was was referencing is that 
as long as it's stipulated in the contract that they can have solar panels installed, right. then it's up to the homeowner and the condo association to monitor and, and um, maintain that. Right. Let's yeah, we've given some guidelines of what we'd like to see so that they're not raised and hanging into the sky, that they're, you know, within, you know, they're flush to the roof. Right, we've given, we want to see the conduit plan so that the conduit that runs from the panels to the box is hidden and runs along the eave and down the side and is painted the color of the siding. So we've given guidance to ensure that the look of the panels okay. is the way we would want it to be. Okay. Not well, let's let's, let's take there. a look at that and see what, it, what it's at. Okay. Um, gray water. So action mm. Gray water. Where are we on? I brought that. <laughs> I was just curious if there was any yeah. plan in place. You had spoken about, I think, in one of your original briefings that there was a possibility of something to that effect. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'd go for it. Um, so, <clears throat> the way the system is structured now, the leaching fields and the wastewater treatment facilities over in the area of Clinton Street. So this project is probably a mile and a half away. There's no real way to get where you want it. The way the system is run now, everything goes through the plant and then it gets dispersed through the leaching fields. It's, it's clean water basically and then it goes back into the aquifer and eventually works its way down and recycles all over again. There's no real way to get that water up there for those purposes. I'm not so sure we've got DEP permission, but even if we did, I mean, you'd be talking about a tremendous amount of taking up of roads to run water lines and pump systems and everything else. It would be very costly and frankly cost, cost prohibitive yeah. to do that. Well, yeah, don't you addition. have to do drip irrigation for well, some? On the, just on the south side. There are yeah. very specific well, areas. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, because I think it's going to give them the warm okay. feeling on, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the way, the way the system works now, at various stages of build-up, for instance, we have leaching fields that are built on the uh, west side of Clinton Street. Then we built more fields last year on the east side of Clinton Street, round numbers that gets us to about <coughs> 200,000 gallons per day. Now beyond that, those are leaching fields. Beyond that, the remaining portions of the system is called a drip system. And basically what that is, is these fine little picture little pipes, little tiny pipes and they run just very shallowly in the soil, and then the excess amount of water goes in those pipes, and basically think of it as like an irrigation system in a house, yeah. and it just spreads water through portions of land. Some of that's gonna go in the back side of the East Main Street retail component, and some of that will be in the various components in lawn areas on the south side. So in essence, we're gonna be using some of quote unquote gray water for those purposes, but it'll be on the south side not on the north side. If I may, that's the overall project for the southern side, and, that, and that's great. But for individual units, gray water, instead of using drinking water for toilets, uh, that's the idea. Uh, so if you have a dishwasher, shower, sink, uh, that water can be directed towards toilet water. So, you know, that would, that would be an extreme. That's something that the homeowner would you know, maybe want. I, I don't think that would be very cost efficient. We, have, we haven't seen that implemented yet in, the, in it's not accepted really in Hopkins. It's not what, sorry? It's not an accepted practice for, for, for buyers in this market. That would be very, very radical for somebody to, to understand well, it's, and grasp. it's the future, but EMC does it. Um, yeah, but EMC is the only one that, that I know that really does it. And that's a commercial application, too. There's a big difference sure. between commercial and residential <laughs> standards. And, and Perceptions. Um, I just think there's a, to me, there's a there's a huge health risk of perception when it would come to, to using gray water throughout your house and around your house. It would be a, it would be a well, significant it's marketing. Just, you know, right from the same. It's, it's well, but then you're then you're talking about a, a whole separate water distribution yeah, system, right. and, that, and then the yeah, depth of that too, yeah, right? Wouldn't the depth of, of that water distribution system be? Oh, it would be the same 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 thing as a regular water distribution system. Underground sprinkling? No, I mean if you used gray water for for toilets and whatever, you'd have another you know you'd have hot, cold, and gray. Right. <laughs> Good thing it starts with a different. And God forbid someone starts drinking gray water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's actually, Frank, to your point, maybe 10 or 20 years from now, that would be a common practice. Today, it's not. 
even in in, in Florida, we're, we're good thoughts. In, in Florida, we're my, yeah. Yeah. In, in Florida, where my mother has one a house, they use gray water for irrigation or landscaping in the in golf courses. It, it, it's, this is the original Del Webb uh, age restricted community, uh, and basically there used to be a restriction that if they built so many units, they had to add another hole to the golf course <laughs> and irrigate it. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody's playing golf, but they are still <laughs> the, the golf courses are still being watered. Well, there is a 14 hole golf course in Birmingham. Maybe now that's how they got the odd number of holes. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so we're, we're done with gray water. Yeah. Snow removal when I uh, the when I'm not sure. It's it's when it snows. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, I, the the reason why I brought that up is because there's a lot of a lot of standing snow that that gets piled up and piled up until a point, and who makes that decision on when it should be removed? Um, it, it wasn't based upon when a sto snowstorm comes that the snow is there, it's how much do we, we allow before it needs to be removed just on the, on the anticipation of another storm coming and to get into a point where it's, it, it, it's no longer manageable. I see it down by my house, which is 86 West Main Street. Um, snow has to be removed or else we are in a, a juggernaut. It, it's terrible. So when you're in these other roads associated to legacy, um, and there's no stipulation on snow removal or when, then we've got an issue coming down that could end up being bigger than what we have. Yeah, to Cliff's point, I'm assuming snow removal on, on Legacy Farms is done privately, not done by the town. On the condominium roadways, um, yeah. when, the, when the spine roads north and south are accepted that's by the, the town, town. That's the town, right, because that's the town road. villages, the condominiums are private. But, yes. when, but when the snow falls like it did a couple of years mm -hmm. ago and it piles up eight feet nine feet ten feet high it becomes dangerous I mean we need to make sure that it's removed before it becomes dangerous to Cliff's point mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I was going with that is that there has to be a, 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 a finite decision on, on when it, it needs to be removed because if we don't we're just going to Mr. Chairman and that's a very valid point I think what you'll find <coughs> we've seen actually on the cell side too the best monitor of that kind of situation is the homeowners themselves because the first thing you'll get is a phone call from a group of homeowners saying, hey, listen, my street needs to be plowed better, my street needs snow removed. Mm -hmm. And so th that's really the best way to monitoring. You can write all the things you want. It doesn't mean anything as compared to the homeowners monitoring what's going on with the condominium association. That's really the way it happened two years ago when we had a lot of the villages from the south that were up. Um, it is private, the snow is privately done. Um, there is a property manager that the condominium hires. The property manager hires a professional snow removal company. And, and those two work together to remove the snow. And when there's no more room to put the snow, they remove the snow on an as, on an as needed basis. And as Roy pointed out, whenever any of the homeowners, for any reason, whether it's you know, not properly sanded, not properly ice melted, whether they're not happy with the way that the snow's been removed, that you know you get the, the property manager gets the phone call, the property manager then calls the snow removal company, and it all gets taken care of uh, privately. So oh, all right. that's that's the way it, it works everywhere. The only question that, that that leaves for me in in the when aspect, and that's why I put when there, was that that okay you make that it comes to the determination of a of, of, of few owners call in and say, I can't even see out of my driveway, pulling out of my driveway, or whatever it is. Um, it has to go through channels. Another storm comes that night, mm -hmm. and then we're, we're back into a, uh, that backing up situation constantly, you know, or, or continually, like like two years ago. Let's call it just that that instance. Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure if this is relevant to the application process. The removal of snow is, is definitely it, it, relevant. It could, could be relevant. Uh, okay. Partic you know, the, I think the concerns that I think people might have is that the density of, of it with the driveways and the amount of driveways, there just isn't as much room for snow. And we certainly have not set up 
snow storage areas, so I'm not sure where yeah, they are. Yeah, the front yards. I mean, it's, it, it, I mean that's it's really if we started, that ruins the front yard. If we started talking it, about that it, kind of it, stuff, no, it, it, yeah, it just, we haven't talked about anything that we can really do so far. So, yeah, I, you know, what what Mr. could we do? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, couldn't be as simple as having a sentence somewhere in the in the uh, conditions that says the condominium, condominium association will properly maintain and keep access to the roads open during snowstorms. Something to that effect. And visibility? No, well, that's so properly. If you're what, in what a blizzard, you're not going to have visibility. Yeah. But I think something, you know, if you'd like to gladly come up with one or two sentences that addresses your concern in a reasonable fashion. Great. Does that make sense? That sounds like how, how we could handle it. Sounds right. Yeah, it's a balancing know. act, right? Sure. If you say I'm going to remove the snow every time it snows a no. foot, you're putting an undue we that, would be putting an undue burden yeah, no. on the we're homeowners not. that are actually going to have to pay for it. Yeah, so let me make it clear. It's a balancing the, act. The, the, what I'm saying is is not in the on the in the advent that that things happen, you know, like a like a, a one foot storm or a one and a half foot storm or what two foot storm. I'm saying when you pile that up and nobody can see around those those big berms or those big snow piles then then we have yeah. a, a, an issue for, for some, for some people sure. getting hurt but but we'll two, but, two, but, but two years ago we we had the same thing on every every house at in Hawkington and, 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 and you know it was it was it was tough and you had to use a little sense getting out and around but and how did it work out for yeah. legacy so I think it worked out fine but again Anytime you have a storm of that magnitude, you can have some issues. You know, you can plow it all you want, but when the snow is four, five, six feet deep on both sides of your driveway, you're pulling out. It's difficult. I don't care where you live. Right. But yeah. I think I think the important thing is we come up with one or two sentences sure. that we can incorporate that shows the proper intent of maintaining sure. during snowstorms. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. We, do we have a draft of that kind of stuff that we're we'll trying to do? No, I mean as far as all the this, conditions. Yeah. That Jennifer and Elaine is working <laughs> on it. <laughs> but they've been tasked, tasked to work on it. Okay. And I'm sure they'll take the ones on the south side I and just, add to it. If you could even send us a draft. We, we will get that. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're just so I can, it helps me kind of think about it. We're getting closer. Okay. But, uh, okay. yes. Well, Mr. Chair? Yeah. We can roll back to the uh, gray water question because um, when Penny made a statement of red at the end, it made me think. Um, he said he was talking about watering this long. So we have a pro uh, process we work with the state and uh, the recycling center to do uh, rain barrels. Uh, every year or so, we get an opportunity to buy a rain barrel for 30 bucks or something like that. And uh, maybe we should have a condition that the homeowners on this property can have a rain barrel without any interference <coughs> from the condo association. Or maybe only the under homes. If I may add to, to Frank's question, is I thought I read somewhere just recently that the state of Massachusetts is not allowing collection of water. I don't know. I think that's Colorado. Was that was that Colorado? I th I, I just heard it, so I, I'm I'm <coughs> just throwing it out here. Mosquito, it's a mosquito trap. I was just concerned. I'd be concerned about that. But no, these these are red barrels. That they're covered and they. They collect rain from your gutters, the and, you, and you have a little hose, and you sprinkle it on your, on your lawn. It's all gravity fed. And well, New England is trying to move away from gutters in the first place, I think. To build the gutters in these buildings. Well, they, well, <laughs> well, the fronts of the buildings have gutters. The rears do not. Um, the, the one of the big causes of ice dam is gutters. It, it blocks up the water, it drains, and goes up your roof. So there are benefits to not having gutters. So we put them on the front for safety and for. Um, keeping the driveway and the walkways uh, dry, but on the rears. Um, so if it's someone wanted a rain barrel, they lived in this community, they would have to put it in the front of their home, and they could use it to water their grass. So somebody previously on the south um, requested a rain barrel okay. to the condominium, and the condominium approved it, subject that it was in the rear of their home. And they couldn't do it because of the And they had to put gutters sign. on. Mm -hmm. that many people have to put gutters on if they so choose. Um, and then it had to be screened, and, and we and we approved the location based on the site-specific area. It's a, a, a lot of times the condominium, when the board is looking at approving things on the exterior, it's it's really for the benefit of the community and to make sure that it's aesthetically appealing and done right. And 
not people are haphazardly adding things to their homes in a mismatched manner. Correct. So it sounds like you have a plan. It's covered. Can, it's can, it, it is. We, we try to accommodate things like that. Why, why don't you, why don't you send a, a, a copy of the either condo restrictions or whatever? We probably have gotten them at one point or another. Maybe that's just another adjunct that, like we talked about, the, the snow removal. Maybe there's some sort of stipulation in there with, with rain barrels that can be um, into the condo association of some sort. Yeah. Take a, let, let, let's just take a look at what you got. And, and, and that still le leans on the, on the, on I mean, the owners of the, of the homes that I are mean, purchasing, right? right. But, but, it does. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, a lot of the condo association is to keep the aesthetics of the outside, period. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, there's 18 people that have asked for sheds to be built and whatever, and they've said no to all those, partly because I think we didn't want sheds in there either. And with the amount of space in these units, if you can't find storage space in these places, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're using too many rooms for bedrooms. Uh, so are these the type of things <laughs> that the condo association should be addressing? Yeah, right. to me, probably. It sounds like we're getting overly prescriptive. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yep. That's just okay. Well, I think the, so that, the wording was was I was just adding to the wording if in their in their presentation of master plan is just say we we allow for rainwater and for snow removal and solar. So so those things are in there for the customer the the buyer with with the association with the association. Sure. Once we, could, once we see that document, we can probably... Right, so, so okay. everybody understands let's, that. Let's right? just let that one go. Okay, uh, Wilson Street and Legacy Farms Road North. I don't remember what that was for. Yeah, if, if I could... So yeah. one of the neighbors came to a meeting, and <clears throat> if you remember a number of years ago, that you come out of Legacy, there's a stop sign. And there was debate at the time whether Legacy should just run right through because Rafferty is not going to be powered. Out of Legacy Vibes Road North, also. Mm -hmm. You should have the stop sign at, at uh, Wilson. Mm -hmm. For now, it's determined it's just going to be a stop sign at Legacy in the Rafferty slash Wilson. Is it like, you know, Rafferty slash Legacy. Now, whether you want to eventually have a four way stop sign, that's up to the board. There was concern at one time by neighbors down in Kruger in that neighborhood. If there was going to be traffic coming out of Legacy instead of going straight, taking your right, mm -hmm. and I think, as I recall, the determination of the board at that time was, you were going to live with it for a while, see how it went, and for whatever reason, if it was determined that too much traffic was going right, you were going to propose putting <coughs> a right turn sign in at some future point, but yet to be determined. That's mm -hmm. the history I recall. Did you say no right turn? That's what I'm saying. Let's let's just say. No, I know. But let's just, say you opened it for a year and you found too much traffic. I don't see why they would. But let's say there's too much traffic going to the right. You might consider instituting a no right turn. That seems that kind of weird. Right? I mean, I thought it was, but that's. I think it's a non a, a non issue. But yeah. yeah. It probably makes more sense to have the stop signs on Wilson Street. Yeah. Right. It does actually. You know, because we're trying to encourage people to continue along, and you know from. I talked to DPW director. I met him on Legacy North, just road. Just we were driving, and uh, his, his truck is easier to find than mine. And uh, he basically said the North Road is down to relatively small punch list. That's right. And uh, you know, just curbs left. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I am happy to report. The two poles you want removed have been removed. Even the one on Cedar Street? No, I said the two poles. <laughs> the two poles. The two poles that you did. The want new to ones. Be. Oh, okay. The two, Great. The two new poles. Oh, Thank those you. ones. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Good. The pole on the Franklin has been removed. The one in the middle of the street. Uh, the one on Cedar Street. The wires for Evasaurus and <clears throat> Comcast have been removed. We're still waiting for Verizon to be. Horizon to move their wires. Once they do, that pole will come out. We'll finish paving the street. Maybe we move the street sign out of out of the pavement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is noticeable. I can't believe Some they. The I can't believe they did it either. <laughs> but but that's great. Good good job on that. Yeah. 
Okay, so Wilson and Legacy Farms, it might have been the person from Kruger Road that was here during the outline that we put it here. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of his concerns were also clean up and whatever of that restricted land right at that corner and how that's going to get rescreened. And uh, he was upset when some of the trees came out of that area. That's not part of this subject here. But quite frankly, looking at stop signs on Wilson make a lot more sense I agree. In, as opposed to on the legacy side. What That is a good question though about the landscaping on the, that, those corners up there. Is, is there any plan for any trees? It'll be, it'll be in the next set when we look okay. at the 180 units or okay. site plan review for that. Because that, that, that's at the top of, of um, Wilson to the left, right? If you're coming out of Rafferty towards Legacy, it's to the left. It's to the left. Okay. Any comments on this one? Anyone? Anything more? Okay. Now we're starting to get into the detailed versions of each of the villages. From Ada's standpoint, have you guys gone through each of the villages as far as the review yet? That, um, as the concept has come through <coughs> over the last two or three months, um, we've certainly been looking at those concepts and how they've been creeping into the areas with uh, the, uh, curved alignments in streets and so forth, uh, setting properties front and back, the pocket parks, that kind of thing. So, so the review has certainly crept into these areas, and I think that. We haven't seen final plans, for example, in the entire project. That's, that's I think, uh, something just worth talking about. But at such time, those come in, I think it would be a case of getting into those areas and just verifying that the various concepts that have been discussed are making it into those final plans. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I'm not suggesting that we do this for one option. If we could hesitate on A through C and work on B through N, which but more general. Yep. Um, Just give us an option. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, th I, th uh, well, I, th I think that we ought to do, and I agree with that, what we is it kind of a consensus that the overall layout with all the cul-de-sacs and everything we've done, ready for all the final engineering and data to get their job done to make sure that there's enough storm water, et cetera, and all that stuff. I'm seeing a lot of people nodding their head. Okay, I think we've got to the point where basically it's time to finish the plans. And, yeah. and they're going to be massive numbers of pages, so if you get a village done, give it to beta, because they're not going to be able to review it overnight or from Thursday to Monday. I mean, it's going to take a while, and I know you want to get approval, so. Mm -hmm. It's like an iterative process. And, it, and of course, engineer to engineer, you're always well, welcome to talk. Yeah, and I think that plays into the construction management plan as well, like assuming that the folks are on board with the general development pattern and proceeding in a pattern that matches that yeah. makes sense. You know, I, 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 so we'll skip five tonight because that was a good, good suggestion. Okay. So, so we're going to four, five A through C. It's also five B. And then there's a A through C. We're we're, we're, we're skipping over. Yep. And then we're going to D. Yeah. Right. Residential amenities. No, that's that was part of the other one. We'll, we'll start the next one. Utilities, yeah. irrigation. Right. Says everything's underground. I'm good with that. I think everything is underground at this point, and so we're all we're happy with the utilities. Obviously, there's gas going to the site, and water, and sewer, and mm -hmm. phone, and cable, and house, house and electricity. electricity. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Got Wi-Fi. We have yeah, electricity. We have yeah. no poles. Wow. Do we have any poles? Do we have any yeah. poles? Yeah. Poles are gone. So any so poles no that need to come out? Zero, right? 
Right. I thought there was one on Cedar Street or something. That's, you sell the property. That's not the property. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were able to get electricity to the property? Uh, it was a hurdle, a Herculean task, but we have accomplished that. Good. Can uh, I see a Superman suit? Because yeah. I'd like to yeah. see that. So you went from 18 okay. months to two weeks? So just a question about utilities, Mr. Yep. Chairman. Sure. So do they all run under the street? Yes. Like the, the sewage is under there as well? Everything is under the street. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And sewer, and water, gas, telephone. There's conduit all up and down the, the Legacy North Road already installed for all that. We have 80,000. We have 16 miles of conduit. Under the road. How long is the road? Under the road. No, how long is the road? Two miles? 8,000 8, feet. A mile and a half. But just the electrical alone has six conduits, five inch, schedule 80, which you could drive a truck over, all encased in concrete the entire length. Really? Why are they encased in concrete? Because that's what ever source requires. It's under the road. For protection? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Somebody still needs the wires. Okay, so what's the population? Uh, any other utility questions? I think I think that's pretty standard. Population projections, student population for the north side. We'll skip over that one. Everyone is always interested in that one. I, I think we have some of that into the old uh, numbers. We're actually, we're actually below our projections, but I can get you the projections for the north side because there's actually less bedrooms per unit on average on the north side than there is on the south side. Okay. Okay. And there's also no affordable homes and there's no rental homes as well. Those tend to drive higher ratios of, of school kids. What's interesting is. And this, this is what surprised me a little bit. I think the Pulte numbers are right where we thought they were going to be, but the, the uh, affordable numbers are much higher than we thought they were going to be. So, fortunately, we're not doing any more of that. So, the town is tracking the school kids from the yeah, south, and you have very recent, real, updated we do. information that is, is available. I, I thought we heard at like town meeting or something that there wasn't a big increase. No, the, 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 it's, it's right. It's it, The Woods Department of 240 are, are slightly over because I think for some reason I want to remember that the amount was like 25 for 240 apartments or something like that and maybe we have 36 and, and I don't hold me the numbers because, you know, right. I'm Jim? not. No pressure. So, so we are pretty much on track with the school kids. Well, and so, so when people say that this project is driving the school stuff, basically our school system is losing kids elsewhere. So basically the school oh system is pretty well level as far as number of kids. That's what I remember seeing at the meeting, and I was really surprised at that. It's still affected so as of yeah. April of this year, the total number for the south side was 115, which from October only increased by three students. Um, for the apartments, the total was 37, but in October it was 52, so that decreased. I think we might see a lot of families just starting yeah. for so maybe five years from now, 10 years from now. And then we'll jump. I'm sorry. Well, in, in theory, if, if the bonus rooms aren't used as bedrooms, and I get a call every four months from somebody that says, Pulte's marketing the bonus rooms is something that you can put a bedroom in, just put a nice little hutch to, to hold the per person's clothes. And I says, well, I know we've turned down building permits for converting yeah, bedrooms. And, and they are restricted in the, yeah. in the uh, deeds. So. The condominium does not allow additional bedrooms. Yep. And so uh, the proof is in the numbers of school kids. So Jennifer, you said 115 school kids from the south side total? As an eight ball. Yeah. Which includes the apartments. But that goes back to no, the, 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 the changing no. of the guard, so to speak. Kids, people having children, it's going, it, it should increase as people 
No, the number of kids will only increase if the economy picks up. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that has not. Okay, let's. We'll, we'll go over. We'll, we'll skip the. We'll get the projection for the next time. Uh, school bus waiting areas. I, I think we've seen a plan recently that. Yes. We have. We updated our trail plan to show some additional parking space. Put these right run through with you. Uh, this should be in the updated packet that you received. Uh, we talked about this a bit on our site walk a couple weeks back. Uh, the idea of, you know, we'd already shown a couple of trailhead parking locations on the opposite side of Legacy Farms Road North from the developed area. Um, and we started discussing, well, could those double as areas where uh, people could wait with their kids for the bus to come uh, if we just maybe looked at lining those up a little bit better with the uh, the intersections of those main entries onto Lexi Farms Road North. So the trail master plan that you're looking at now uh, shows some new locations for those roads, uh, for those parking areas. We've actually added uh, 16 new spaces uh, over the 12 that we already had along this roadway and disperse those, those out uh, at some of the entries uh, that you see along Legacy Farms yeah. Road North. So up at Road A, we have one uh, right at Road C. And that really involved just kind of relocating the ones we were already showing as part of the trail plan. But we've actually increased the number of spaces that are in those parking areas. Yes. And then we've also added uh, two additional six space areas uh, down by road I and road H. Uh, quick quick question, the four on Legacy like North, they're all paid parking lots? These are gravel. Gravel, okay, thanks. Be gravel. Uh, and I think there's a fifth one over by Buffalo's and Right, this, right. Right. this wouldn't, this wouldn't double as bus right. right. parking, but these, these would. Right. They, they Thank you. serve a multi-function. And those parking places, the buggy and bus parking places, do they get plowed then by the private contractor in the wintertime? Uh, these? Yes. yes. They would need to be. They would need to be. So, so, would that, would, so would that be stipulated in the condo association? Excellent. If they're for, if what we're saying, we're communicating that there's school bus, they're doubling as school bus parking areas, then they would need to be open when the school is open, which means they need to be maintained and that's something the condominium could do. Okay. Is it because they're going to be maintained, would it be better to to, to make Pavable. these paved? That's what I was going to think. It's hard to, it's hard to plow gravel. Right. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, you can do it depending on if you use a dense grid, it would come back to material. My concern is we're creating a lot more impervious area if we pave it. <coughs> to say nothing of the cost of the I think if we do a good dense graded base and compact it well, we'll be able to plug just fine. What if, is it? Are these um, parking areas surrounded by guardrail? No, no, they're on a flat piece of land. They're just on a flat piece of land. So, and uh, under what we discussed the last time, I believe we said that there was a drop off. So that would the snow be able to be pushed off? Of so okay. There's that. plenty of room around it to push snow. We, we did look at the grading off of all of these areas. You'll notice there are two locations where we didn't put them, and yes. that was due to grades and being up against wetland uh, areas. We, we intentionally didn't put them here, but each of those neighborhoods does have a location that would serve them. And right. we've increased the size of them significantly. Yes. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. And, and they also still have the extra spots on the entrances of the roads. Yeah. The, uh, we, we would actually propose not to widen the roads at this point if we're going to provide the, uh, the gravel spaces across the street. Uh, we don't, don't see the benefit of, of having both of those. Mr. Chairman, can we just have that discussion that you brought up about the need for gravel? gravel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. other, whatever other people's thoughts on that. I, 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 I just overheard some of it because I was being, I was looking at something else, but what? Gravel parking lots or paved parking lots? Um, I, again, I, I agree that the density of, a, of 
a sub sub gravel would be would be plowable. I think optimally, the the best thing would be to have them. If if you're not going to open up the roadways like Ken was asking, is that is that part of the the intent is to to leave the roads as we have them and provide these areas. Well, well uh, if that be the case, gravel, it, you know, they would be plowed. If there was damage done to them, if gravel came off in a season, they'd be repaired the next season. Some additional gravel would be added. They need to be maintained in a condition that would be suitable for people to. It, my my thoughts are that if you could. You're, you're not going to really have them more impervious if you keep the streets narrow. You just move that pavement over to the park. That's what, I, I, and that's that's where I was going to go with that. My my, my follow-up was that if you're not widening the end of the, of the streets, then couldn't that you've already allotted for that? So I, why I, wouldn't why why wouldn't it be I, good? Yeah. I, guess I, I just looked. Hold on a second. I just looked to uh, AMC Park as an example that we <coughs> made that gravel. And then it was a pain in the ass for a long time when we finally paid to get it paved. I, I, just speaking on behalf of the developer, I think we'd like to see how it functions <coughs> for a season or two. If it's working fine the way it is, uh, we propose to keep it as gravel. I think that uh, goes better with the character of this being more natural on this side of the road and, and not have it look like a parking lot uh, as we're into the, uh, you know, the public open space. Uh, and if, if there are issues with it down the road, we'd be happy to relook at it. But I, I don't think, uh, you know, I can point to a lot of instances where you see gravel parking, and yes, it does need a little bit of maintenance to uh, repair it sometimes the next season in a particularly bad winter. But uh, it is done all the time, and I, I don't see yeah, that right. it would be a big issue here. If I may, I, 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 think, I think that's a reasonable point to, to give a couple of seasons. I am concerned driving through and looking at four different large paved areas. Mm. It's going to start to look a little commercial if you're with a lot of paved parking lots. It's one thing to have something that's I a gravel I, th I think a parking lot looks like a parking lot. I don't care what the surface is when I'm seeing it, but that's me. I, well, I'm a little concerned about the, the shape of these things. If you're parked in the last parking lot, mm -hmm. is there enough of the T to, to, to back out of that and turn? Right. I, you know, we could we could probably lengthen those out a little bit. I don't see. I, 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 mean, I, I think you got to be able to turn a car out of that last lot. Right. Or not have to back out. Long yeah, way we don't right. want anyone backing out. That's a good point. So are we good with the gravel? It sounds like no, we no, feel strong gravel. I, I want to say I'm support of the gravel. Uh, we have gravel at several uh, trail uh, heads for parking places. Uh, you know, four or five cars, nothing big, but. Uh, when they do get loud, it's usually just along the edges, and then the uh, it's pervious, so the, the water melts and absorbs the water underneath, and it's, uh, cars just drive over it anyways and park uh, when there's a as long as there's not a big buffer in the way of snow. So and it, as you mentioned, the drainage it, it, it comes into a drainage issue. So so so. Planning board members, gravel is okay. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Done. Okay. No changes so, to the so plan. Okay. Other than extending it a little bit. Yep. Turning up. <coughs> yeah. And everyone is happy with the cars on the other side. I think you need to keep the entrance on the two that you don't have any parking on. There, there's going to be some parents that are going to end up at those yeah. two spots for is sure. Is well, there going to be bus stops at those? They streets? might be. Well, it depends. Well, you're right. I, I agree with you, Ken. Um, in my opinion, and it is that if you can keep with the widening of those areas, those two areas where there aren't the, the, the extra parking, um, the rest of the board, I, I, if you want to pass it around. But I'm, I'm kind of like don't, keeping them narrow. I don't see a need to widen it. I don't think you would. Unless, unless you're putting a bus stop there, but... The idea of these parking lots is to yeah, have the bus, you know, have the bus stop. Well, no, the parking lots are, are, are more for the trailheads and all that other stuff. But in addition, but to they've added two. They've added. I'm sorry, through the chair. Yeah, go ahead. They've added two more spaces per lot that that were existing plus two additional lots. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm assuming that the reason for that is to create those as the bus stops for the for the school children. Right. You know, the rest of them, yes, they're still going to be. You know, for the trail parking, and they'll all end up being for trail parking, mm -hmm. really. 
when school's not in session, but I mean, they'll be there for the parents to drop their kid, you know, to, to meet their kid, drop their kids for the bus and meet their kids for the bus. I don't see a reason to widen right. the section of road A and road C. Right. Uh, well, you still have it on the design though, right? You, you, it's still on the design where they're widened, right? In, in the refined plans that we're pulling together to submit for, for our final submission, they're, they're not widened any longer. And we're, the reason for the non-widening is what? It was widened for parents okay. to park, park. To, for their children, right. you know, to pick up their children and drop off their children. Sure. There's no longer a need to pick up and drop off their children at those streets because of the parking lots. Did anyone from Pulte contact the school department and ask whether or not they would allow driving on these roads? We did. And the answer was? was actually um, Bowler's office contacted yep. them. And my understanding is that they, um, they don't determine the bus stops until there's actual users. And at that, that time, the bus committee people will get in a room and determine where they will put the bus stops. So that's that. And then also, um, they said that the bus stops, if they can service uh, homes within a mile, a mile. a mile, then they are obligated to put a bus stop. So they will not. So based on that determination, they will not be driving within these villages because they're not. It's not a mile from the public road to the end of the village. So um, they wouldn't confirm where the bus stops will, will will be. They won't do that now. And they, but they sort of confirm that they won't be driving through the villages and they're. Did they, did they have they a pro get prohibition much on going on to private roads? No. They do not have a prohibition from driving in private roads, but they will not drive in private roads if you're under a mile. So they from a public road. Public road. That's correct. And and to caveat, even it, though the, the, it's the might be safer to, to to drop them off on the on you know inside the development, right. quite frankly. <laughs> okay, Mr. Well, Chairman, we could always widen them down the road if it needs to be. Well, I'm curious, is the bus going to turn around and pick up the bus? The bus is going to drive well, down all the way down to the north. All I mean, the way back out to 85 and then take a left and I mean, come back? They'll have to create. So what they do, it, it, essentially, is every year they change the bus route. The population the shifts every year. Sure. They yeah, where always to fill up the be. buses and to maximize efficiency. So what they really said is we can't tell you where the bus stop will be because we don't know where the kids will be to fill up the buses. And then the route changes every year. In my own experience, the buses never turn around. Unless it's a town line. Yeah, they, they won't they'll, they'll go, yeah, they'll they'll go, go to the end. Won't, won't they go to the end and then? They'll go straight through. Well, it, it, like it, it, that or they'll, they'll, they'll take all these a loop and or, or they'll turn whatever. down Wilson or. Okay. It's, we're not going to solve that. Yeah. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can, yeah. can we get clarity on either widening or not widening? I think we got clarity. I, well, we not, didn't, not we didn't get clarity. I'm sorry. Was it not to widen, I think? Right. Was that Can we I take a vote on that, please? Well, let's take some nods. Yeah. Who, wants to, who wants to see widened at the, at the entrance to these streets? At, at the two that we're talking about that don't have anything adjacent to them, I, 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 I say keep them at the width because it, it, it'll end up being more of an expense later than it is to do it right now. It's not our expense. Right. I understand that. But if it's already on the plan, and we've already we're, we're, it, it, we've got such a gap between here and here, this might be the right thing to do for right now. Who, you know, that's my that's my vote is that we we stay with the widening. Well, first of all, these are good, these are going to have curbs on all these streets. So so the people that think they're doing a great job of parking and destroying the grass at, at both sides of Legacy Farms Road are not going to have that option without running up and over a curb. Right. So. So where do you want to go from here? I, I, I suggest that the On the two, let's go narrowly. The two roads, which is road? Road C and road A. P. No, is that A? A. a. C and A centrally the located. South side of A. These two right here. The two without the trails. The without the trails. I think they should stay wide and then everything else go back to the unpaved um, bus stop or trailheads. But that makes it question, will the bus even stop there? Well, we don't know that. We don't know. Yeah, just, you won't know. But the road and then it, it, it isn't going to hurt anything to have the widening of the road. 
uh, having a couple more parking spots for the residents of this, these, you know, if anything you criticize these whole things is whether or not there's enough parking right. for this thing without people parking all over the road. But right. I, I, if a person has a party, though, they'll take the whole call to sack when you, When you say it doesn't hurt anything, it hurts the aesthetics and it hurts the uh, impervious services. So just I wouldn't go with the statement that having... But how do you how do you feel that it, it it hurts the aesthetics? More pavement to look at versus less pavement. I, I, I really apples and oranges, isn't it? I mean, pavement is pavement is pavement. A, a little wider is not going to. It's more pavement. You can't argue that's not more pavement and wider. To me, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, to me, with the wider gotcha. roads, people are going to want to park there first. They won't go into the parking spot because it's closer to the bus if the bus parks there. It's closer for their kid walk from there to there as opposed to having to park there and wait. No, what, he's, what we're talking about is here. See I this? know it. Yeah. Right there. Our, sure. our, bus, our bus is going to stop there. We don't, we don't know. know. Exactly. We don't know. So I'm just telling you, the way it's going to look is people are going to park there first and then go there. I vote to keep them narrow. Keep, keep which? Narrow. 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 All the way. Okay. Who's, who, who's a narrow person? <laughs> narrow minded. Okay. Well, it doesn't That's look enough. on TV. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're into narrows. Easy enough. Okay. I think the narrow is 20 feet, not 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, I think we're, we're at a point where we've got to stop, because otherwise we're not going to get out of here at the time. Like I said, we're hoping that we have LNG peer reviews and chief's review, and then the chief can talk about his safety stuff. And we won't make him sit through the rest of this stuff. If you know, we'll, we'll try to finish up. We'll try to do safety and, and all that first thing at 8:45 So I'm looking for a motion to continue the public hearing to 8:45 on July 11. So move, second. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you have those colored maps? Yeah. What time do we have? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Sewell, that's fine. I'm also in July 11. Are you okay with us going? I think we're probably going to go in an hour and a half. Sure. Are you okay with us going to? I mean, you just yeah. suggested 845. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, we write down last week. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, have, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Let's let's introduce a uh, discussion on 85 West Main Street. Hi, hi, I'm Jim Mark. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you for letting me um, get in here. My name is Victor Teglasi. I represent the owners of uh, 85 West Main Street. Uh, we have before the planning board uh, uh, an item to uh, adjust the parking. Uh, at 85 West Main. We're asking for uh, three additional spaces. Uh, one space is in the back. Um, this space is already sort of being used as a de facto parking space. Um, and we're, we're asking to be able to strike that as a space. Uh, the second space we're requesting um, is, uh, is a handicapped uh, space. Um, I know that's a sensitive item. Um, we have three handicapped spaces, um, and we've got 38 total spaces uh, at the site. I understand that the requirement uh, is one space per 25 uh, parking spaces, and we would still meet that requirement um, if we had two spaces instead of three for handicapped parking. Um, I, I've been at the site uh, at least a dozen times. I've never seen any of those spaces used. So um, I don't think you know anyone will suffer if uh, we just maintain um, the requirements um, for handicapped spaces. The third parking space we're requesting um, is um, adjacent along uh, West Main Street. And currently, there are nine spaces there. Uh, some of those spaces are 
a, a little bit oversized. Um, and so what we propose to do is um, convert uh, some of those spaces to compact uh, uh, parking spaces, but still keeping a minimum of eight feet wide um, uh, width. Uh, uh, three of those spaces would be the standard eight and a half foot width, um, and then the remaining uh, seven spaces would be compact. So we're proposing to go from existing nine spaces to ten spaces. Um, this would require moving the curb line uh, about two feet over. Um, uh, which which to, curb are we talking about? Uh, the that would the be one right at the entrance? Yes. On, okay. on West Main Street? Uh, it, well, the, the, we wouldn't touch the, um, the entrance. Um, there's a um, this sort of a bulb out with, um, uh, you know, landscaping. So it would be a landscaping um, curb, not not a driveway curb. Um, and that would, I think that would be affected by about two feet as, as shown right on here. The, yes, that's right, right on that location. Uh, that's correct. So um, hopefully you will be able to approve all three spaces. Um, if you can't, uh, uh, we'd like to ask you to approve as obviously as many as you can. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure I caught all that. I was trying to dig through my documentation. So, I understand the nine spots going to ten spots. Yep. And was there a room? What, one, one, of the, one of those handicapped ones right where your pencil is pointing yeah. goes, yeah. goes to a right right handicapped spot. Yeah. Okay. And, what was the and then the other one is right at the, at the Lumber Street entrance. It's um, kind of right oh, the Lumber Street entrance. It's right, right, um, it's right there. Oh, okay. And, and that's someone that's, uh, that's being used as a de facto parking space already. Okay. How many handicapped? I, I don't like it. There's three. And well, two. Two. Parking yeah, is very difficult here right now, so yeah. that's why I think they're trying to free up more it, spots. It's going to oh, make okay. it worse. Yeah, well, that's what? the potential. Can I the chair? What? Uh, I want to take opposition to every part of this request. We worked very hard on this on the parking plan, and this is an example of project creep and they come back after the fact. And if you have someone parking in a space that they shouldn't be parking in, they should get a ticket. They shouldn't be parking where they shouldn't be parking. If there's spaces that are too big, you think? No, that's what that's what the plan was when when we when we approved it. If you want uh, take away a handicap space because you don't see someone using it, that's not science. Uh, we need numbers and reasoning for why you want to make changes. And I haven't heard anything that you said that has any standard other than you want to fit more cars in there. And guess what? We already looked at this, and I'm, I'm really offended when you said you didn't see anyone parking in those handicap spaces. You don't know who's parking in those handicap spaces, but you're not there 24 hours. Whenever that's open, and I'm just—I'm sorry, I'm, I'm upset about this, but my my votes no. Mr. Chairman, for you, just just, just to respond to Mr. Durso, um, it's difficult to find a parking spot there, Mr. Durso. So I was just wondering what what would you, do you suggest if you can't my, find a parking spot? My suggest is you don't you add more yourself. people to it and make it yeah. a bigger mess. It is what no it is. This is the plan. No if it's yeah. too if it's too hard for parking, that's the way they asked for it. This is the way it is. Well, well, just you don't add, you let, add, let, add, let, add, Mr. Chair. Add, let, let me try to away. let me try a couple things. Okay, <laughs> sure, sure. First off, from a site plan standpoint, I won't say we made a mistake, but we did because we listened to the guy that you bought it from, and his engineer said that very clear as is the bell because I think several of us asked the question: Does this Starbucks meet the coffee shop parking standard, and we got assured that it was all set. Well, as everyone knows, Starbucks is an office away from home for a lot of people that are using the Wi-Fi, which is the problem that's really manifested itself through here. And, but, and, and we didn't insist upon more parking or less buildings. Basically, that was the, 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 the thing. And, and I think we got some bad information when we made that decision, but in all fairness, our peer reviewer didn't catch it either, and you know, we voted to approve it. And quite frankly, there's not enough parking. That's that's where it is today. Having said that, I'm, I personally am not so sure that we shouldn't do whatever we can to help fix it, because three spots might well, it's going to help. But the other thing that I'm most concerned about right now is that the easement, 
that was to be given to the town for the development for the right turn lane onto Lumber Street has not been filed with the courts or, the, or with the, it's not been recorded at the registry. August. And I'm not going to do anything tonight until we have it recorded for okay. sure. Oh, Mr. Chairman, if I can address that yep. issue um, and, and also address your issue a little bit. Um, we purchased the property um, and, you know, we we got what we got. Um, you know, it's I, I would have done it differently had I been the developer. Um, and uh, if I were the developer, I would have also taken care of the recording of the deed that the developer promised the town to do. Um, having said that, uh, we are committed to uh, taking care of that as quickly as possible and honoring the commitment that was made by the, by the developer, the previous owner. Uh, we're working actively now with the town uh, to get that done and we're looking to understand better what the process is uh, and any help you can give us uh, uh, with that process to, to make it as quick as possible, we would appreciate it. Um, if, if, if um, you know, if, if Mr. Chairman, if you're able to give a, a very conditional approval subject to recording the deeds, uh, that would be helpful if you feel that you can do that. Um, we're, we're not going to do this tomorrow. Uh, we can do it the day after the deed is recorded. Um, and that would be fine, too. So I will just say on that fact that um, Elaine has reached out to them, um, and they reached back out to Elaine today. However, she's on vacation this week. So I did speak with them today and gave them as much information as I had, but I don't have access to all of Elaine's files. So um, I suggested they had to wait until she came back from vacation, which is next, I believe, Wednesday. So, um, I believe that's their hold up at this point is the fact that Elaine is on vacation. Okay. But they have expressed commitment to that. Okay. First, if I may. Yeah, let's okay. just a second. First of all, can we all agree, not on whether this is, should be done or not, that this would be a minor administrative item and does not need a public hearing? For three parking spots. Can you speak okay. up again? Okay. This is a minor project as opposed to something that needs a public hearing on. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's considered minor so that we can do that without formal public hearing. Okay. Um, now we get to the issues. And why don't we just go down the table? I mean, it's, it's, it's three three parking spots, uh, you're converting some, some, uh, Just for the record, yeah. through the chair, I have to recruit myself from yep. being in a butter, so yep. I have to yep. make that known. Okay. Uh, basically, I would assume that the compact spots would be signed with a compact car Correct. only, so that there's some signage that goes along with, with those particular spots. Right. How, how will they be signed is my question. A standing uh, sign or a painted sign? Um, I think sign. we're thinking of, of standing signs, but we could put whatever the board feels is necessary there. Painting doesn't work in the winter. Well, right, that's what I was going to say. Painting doesn't work in the winter, but standing, then that's going to be right up on the roadway, too, right, right, with, the, with the easement. How about, how about a, a sign that says compact cars with an arrow on this one and another one at the seventh one with an arrow going the other way? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of against the compact spots. And can't we get some more spots in the back there instead of doing the diagonal ones, part, instead of doing the diagonal parking lot or parallel park that he wants to do? If you just straighten those out, you can get a couple more spots in back. I would think. I believe part of their problem is their, um, the their amount of their green space in their site plan is right up against the requirement. So I don't think you can lose a lot of the landscaping. And to do what you're doing, I think they'd have to take a big chunk of grass out. You know what I'm saying? I think they're required in their approval. If I looked, if I remember, I looked, and it was like 15% has I'm, to be green. Okay. Oh, it has this. Yeah. But we, 
we can approve that. Can we override um, that? Because my, my yeah, portion personally would not recommend you do that as a minor modification. That was, yeah, that major. <laughs> okay. But my, my personal opinion is I'm totally green and I love green, but I'd rather see um, some standard parking here as, as opposed okay. to the compact parking. Okay, let's let's try to get through this as quickly as we can. Let's let's do it in three 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 things. There's three parking yep. we're, we're talking about. Let's start off with the de facto one right on Lumber Street. Look for a motion to approve conditional upon recording of the easement uh, that particular lot, which is right there at Lumber. That's the parallel Street. parking, right? Yes, parallel parking lot. So do I hear a motion? We have Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. No. Further discussion on this particular one. Frank. I'm against this because uh, some of the land rate was a previous developer. Uh, people uh, make deliveries to Starbucks, to park on Lumber Street, big trucks, um, later than that they should be, it, it, uh, as Butter can tell you. If uh, I may, through the chair. Just a second. And um, the other part of this is, as you say, it stated, you knew this parking spaces that you had when you bought the property. Uh, and this is a brand new development, redone development, all planned out. Uh, there's wetland concerns, there's green concerns, and uh, I'm sure we came to the best combination of parking spaces for that site. Uh, in, in every business that's there, that's just the way it is. And I think in this instance, when you want to add another parallel space that people are using, they shouldn't be there. The reason that's not a space is because of traffic concerns. And if you're going to say, we want to add parking in, show us some metrics. Show us Mr. Us. Chair? Yep. So what, what adding this one space does is it makes an already existing tight parking lot that much tighter. And it makes it harder to travel through. It should be striped. It should be blocked off, just like across the street where they blocked it, so that people don't park there. People don't stop there. Mm -hmm. it, it's too tight. And that's, that's my point on this. Thank you, John. Um, I think we messed up on this one originally. <laughs> uh, there definitely is not enough parking. It was our guidance that helped generate the site plan. And it's our fault as much as the developer's mm -hmm. fault because he was following the guidance that we delineated. So we bear as much responsibility in fixing it as I think they should. Um, Mr. I Chair? I agree with that there's issues there, but having worked through, I'd rather get cars parked than what I see now is cars waiting for a parking space. And that causes more backup than if we had additional spots where they could pull, pull in. Normally, I would say no, but I think the blame falls on us initially for believing that we were approving the right number of spaces. So we share in the blame, and therefore, I think we had I learned from it. So if we have to repeat this someplace else. We know that there's not enough spots for this type of requirement. Uh, so I think we have to participate in the, in the cure and saying that uh, okay. right now if you're doing it, there's, there's cars waiting to find a spot. And I've seen cars sticking out on West Main Street because they're waiting for a, spa, a, parking, a parking spot to clear. Okay. I, I, Mr. Chair? Yep. I, I don't think that adding these spots are going to, it may it may reduce it a little bit, but the, the problem is still going to exist, you know, where people are going to still be parking, driving, waiting for the next open parking space. It's, the problem is going to exist no matter what we, this is not going to fix the problem. The problem is we were sold something and approved something that shouldn't have been approved. and adding these spaces, condensing these other spaces, it, it's not going to solve the problem. 
it may put a band-aid on it, but it's it's really just going to still ooze through the band-aid. May, may I address just, the board? Just a second. Fran? Through the chair, I'm not sure, uh, respectfully, Brian, um, that we are going to be able to come up with a turnkey solution that solves all the issue. I think this, I agree. To, to, to John's point, we can fix a couple of these spots. Um, I think we are, I think we do have some obligation to try to minimize or alleviate to the extent that we can that makes sense individually where we can take advantage of some of these spots. So they're already taking advantage of the one, the parallel parking one, as I've seen people park there today, as it is. And I think we'll go through each, each of the three, argue it or address it on its own merits, and then have a vote on it. either individually, Mr. Chairman, or yep. together. So we're, we've got, we're just addressing the parallel parking lot right. at this point. Are you guys ready for a vote? One more point. We did have a traffic and parking engineer plan. We debate this back and forth. And I'm concerned that if we approve any change now, we're overlooking all the work we did previously. And what if there's a need for an ambulance or something to come through there, uh, fire and safety, uh, there's a bank there, there's going to be uh, safe security precautions that are, that are being overlooked if we have allow this extra space. I don't, th I don't think we made a mistake previously, and I reject any claim of, of making a mistake uh, on, on this board behalf. Uh, I, we did the right thing. I worked on this project from the Conservation uh, Commission side of things when it started, and it's a very tight space. We know it's a tight space, and the developer knew it was a tight, tight space, and we came up with the best solution for the space that we could, and I think making it tighter isn't the best answer to the problem. And there's other coffee stores in town. There's other places people can go. The reason that this, this has a good location is it's next to the highway. People can go there. If it's the spaces are filled, there's other places they can they can find. Okay. You know what okay. you're I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of the motion of adding just the parallel parking near the entrance on Lumber Street. Let's go aye. 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 And that, that's how many? One? Two, three, four, five. All those opposed? No. One, two, three. I think the eyes have got that one. So that's one spot, and that's with the condition. Okay. The second one we'll take up is converting the handicapped one to a non handicapped one. Meaning we still, uh, Jennifer, are within our regulations? Yes, yeah, so we're moving them and we'll still keep them within their regulations. What is the regulation? For clarification, one for 20. It's roughly one, one for 25, but there's a chart. So they have 30, if it's 38, so they fall within, they require to have two spaces. And I confirm that with the zoning enforcement officer. Mr. Chairman, I yes. just want to go out and say I'm for it. Any resolution to help with the parking? Um, I, I don't see any problem. I, I don't problem. see any you problem. You said that something previously, David. I'm sorry. You would tar over the whole area for parking if that's that's not the solution the solution is that we sat down and planned this now they're asking us to look at it and changing it to you mr chairman if it wasn't if it wasn't planned correctly we, there's a disagreement there but what i see is in my opinion it's not planned correctly and we're just going to try to mitigate what we can um i th i don't think it's a, a valid point to say that somebody should pull in there and they can't find a parking spot to go somewhere else i think that's a terrible policy I would say that if two two handicapped spaces in this parking lot is allowed by code law, then that's fine. I'm okay with changing the third handicapped space to a regular space. Okay. Do um, I hear a motion? I just have a question. Yeah. What responsibility have you bared on this? Have you gone to these two Starbucks and said 15 minute limits? Have you done anything in your power to get the vendors in these buildings? to actually move traffic along, or are you just uh, coming to uh, us and uh, saying? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, uh, what we want to do here is step number one. Uh, we have a certain number of spaces, uh, and quite a few of them are, are taken up by employees. So uh, the number of spaces, <laughs> I remember that the number of spaces I'm sorry. Um, that are available for customers 
uh, is maybe 22 or 23. So two or three spaces more is a big deal to us. It's a huge improvement. But, but then have you spoken to the employees about maybe parking across the street or? Um, we, so step number two is, is uh, we've spoken with Starbucks. Um, they are considering a 20 minute um, limit along um, next to their building. Uh, we are also considering a one-hour limit um, um, along the other uh, parking areas. Um, we would like to study this a little bit more uh, and come back to you if it, if it proves to be um, 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 something that's logical. Um, then the next step would be more um, hands-on parking management. Through you, and we feel that that's got to be part of the solution. Um, one of the things that we found <coughs> was that there were people using the parking lot for carpooling, and they parked there all day. Three or four cars come up in the morning, and, and one car gets loaded up with all the other <coughs> folks, and, and we have three cars in, in the lot that's not really, really don't belong there. So that's something we're going to be monitoring. Um, sorry. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, I know this is not a discussion, but why not put a sign saying that parking is for use of the people, you know, patronizing the building, and if other and violators will be towed at owner's expense? Right. That, that, that's right. our solution. So, so with the with the one hour parking, um, uh, and they exceed that by a lot, and we're managing it, then that would that would sign. You know, it would be enforced. So then you wouldn't need to come to us. With this, with, with this request for a change. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I'm, I'm I, I with Brian, that this should be the last resort after you've tried everything on no, your side no, before you. Yeah, I, I think it's more than. I think the problem is is more than three three spots, but right. let's. We are running out of time, to the point where we got to get going here. I don't think we have a motion yet for the second one, do we? A motion to remove no. the handicap. Mr. Chair. He did suggest that he could come back with more information, the more proactive response. I, I feel we need to do both. I, 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 I don't see one or the other, um, to be honest with you, sir. Um, I, I see this as part of an overall plan, um, and, and we realize that this is not the full answer, but we feel it's a significant start. Okay. okay. I'll make a motion on that. Second. Moved and seconded further discussion. Discussion. My point about the, the handicapped spaces is this. If you have, you're saying you don't see anyone using them. Never. I would like to see metrics on that where you have over a week or two where you say, this is how many times these spaces have been used. Because we don't know if three handicapped people are going to go and then one of them is going to be uh, now inconvenienced. Uh, when a handicapped person has to go 40 feet longer. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very. It's, it's, it's not something that's to to, 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 my, to to quickly on the point. The metrics are that our regulations only allow two. Right. That's the metrics. Yeah. Right. We, 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 uh, otherwise, we would have requirement for more. Right. Uh, I, more I, I have one question. Uh, yes. Since we're discussing, and, and I did say that if 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 the requirements are two, I'm fine with that. Right. My my only other point of discussion is what are the optics when it is out there that the planning board for the town of Hopkinton has decided to remove a handicapped space? Well, I, I, the, the optics you would add, you answer that is only two are required by rules and regulations and we got one too many. And it helps us solve a problem. Right. And we're working with and we're working with our business owners to try to make things better. But as a responsible responsibility of the town, we have to be sure you're saying that no one's using these spaces. We don't know that. There is no metric shown to us. I don't think we can take away any, spot, any handicapped spot without a metric showing us it's not being used. But I think to use less than the, the regular spaces, and then if you want to make more money, you can take one. But that's not through, right. Through the, the, through the chair. Handicapped. Through the we chair, if I may. Approve for three spaces. Okay. It, it, it only calls for two. That we're within the scope of. You can't say we sitting there. Uh, uh, well, uh, they're in the scope of. You're in the scope of what the the bylaw says. I don't understand why we 
we have a problem that is clearly a, a problem that was oversight on somebody's part. We sitting there. Do you read the uh, 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 all right, all right. Excuse my language. Okay, okay, okay. Frank, we uh, know what he means. En uh, enough right. of this. We have to be. Let's, we're ready for the vote. All those in favor of voting on removing the handicap one spot, let's go aye. 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 So one, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? No. Aye. And I think everyone voted. So we'll, okay. So we got that one. Uh, we've got to go. We're we're on a hard limit on the room, and we've got to still approve these guys yet tonight. Uh, we'll we'll take up the next one at our next meeting. Maybe not at the late. At the latest, maybe we can, maybe we'll figure out a way to get in. What time were we starting in the other meeting at? Seven o'clock again. With at what? We're starting with uh, one fifty-one. Well, we haven't continued it yet, but we're going to. Okay. Oh, yes. Mr. Chair, it, it seems like we've already had all our discussion. Do you want to just make you want to have yeah. a vote? Okay. We we'll make the motion. That's motion to vote. I move to have the vote for the third party. Yeah. This would be for the compact card. For the compact card. I'll second. Move and second. Okay. Further discussion on this one? Discussion point, Mr. Chairman? Yep. I would like to see, I think to Brian's point, to come back and say a one hour timeline. And <coughs> without, uh, you know, if you see that, you know, towed at the owner's expense. This was, I feel like we got hood, we got snowballed going into this whole thing. I know it's not your deal, but we, we got snowballed going into it. Now we're trying to make it right from wrong. I don't see anything you guys are doing right. to make this work. Quite frankly, you're asking us to fix it. You guys should have come back and said, "Hey, let me let me try this. Let me put that one hour yeah. limit out there. Uh, let me start telling people." Uh, we we agree with you completely. Uh, agree, great uh, action. Uh, and and we we have we have to come back to you. I promise we'll come back to you uh, with a proposal. Uh, great. To then, Mr. Chairman, I I propose that we do not vote until they come back with a plan of action. Okay. I'll second. I, I, I would like to second Fran's motion. Okay. Well, we have we have a motion on the floor, motion on a motion. and so so we can basically. Uh, oh, you, you two amended two motion. the motion. For the amendment. We have oh. two motions on the floor right now. We have one to vote, and then we have Fran's motion to not. To, 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 vote. Basically, Fran's is <laughs> to, 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 Fran's is to table it. You say Fran's right. amendment. Is, it for, is amendment? this just for the third spot? Yes. Yeah. Just just so you know, I plan on voting against this. I don't know if that matters at all if we're voting one okay. by one. I, I, no, I, I wish we had tabled the whole thing, but that's me. But in my opinion, he's going to make his effort to do beyond this because we're talking about more than three spots. We're going to give him two spots maybe or three. Right. We're talking more than that. So right. I think if we do our part here, he's going to do his part there, and I have to I, pr I promise. Don't disagree with that. We'll come right. back to you with a plan, I promise you. I, I'm not as crazy about this one on the merits because that – aisle when we did get our right turn lane done that that turning is going to look a lot different than what it currently mm -hmm. does now and mm -hmm. i don't think and i want to change what tighter spots it's going to be worse it's going to be a mess it's going to be like bumper yeah. cars yeah. it's going right. to be well we haven't got the uh, uh variance on anyway right so anyway uh yeah, right. the motion is to table this last one all those in favor of tabling it say aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed aye and it looks like the motion to table carries. Uh, let's come back with one hour parking limits or whatever sign, kind of signs you want to go with that to try to, or share, we do shared parking too. If you can reach out with, I know the gas station's constrained, but and, and the guy across the street or the guy to the south of you or somewhere okay. else, we do shared parking and shared parking works great for employees. We, we talked to everybody about shared so, parking. Okay. The, the new businesses as well? Yeah. Across the yeah, street? Okay. They didn't want anything to do with it? Okay. Let's, let's, let's keep Next time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Really sure. appreciate it. Thank you. And please, let's see that easement. Okay. Okay. We were right in the... Uh, let's continue the public hearing, 151. Hayden Row Street, but lots of special permits to July 11th at 7 p.m. Hopefully, you can all make it at 7 a.m. July 11th, 7, 7 p.m. Yeah, 
p.m. Do I hear a motion? I move. Move. Second. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstained? Okay, so that's taken care of. I missed that total. <laughs> What did we just on? <laughs> <laughs> to, to continue our public Two hearing. Yes, 151. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back to, we're back to, uh, we open the public hearing for uh, 201 Hayden Row Street. This is the Solar Folks. And you've got some sketches for us. I've got a sketch. Seven trees. Seven trees. The area is about 50 foot in length. So we will be approximately seven foot on center. What we have uh, proposed is, is slightly. Oh, who's the architecture some, on this one? Somebody <laughs> personally <laughs> colored each one of those in. Nice. Will they be this shade of green? <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> We go through the, cr the crayon box to find that. Bullet points are on the left. Juniper, the eastern red cedar, seven foot on center, cross that 50 foot width, slightly staggered, not in a straight line, but as the best at, you can in the yep. driveway. And then we wanted to highlight the other changes from the plans that you have. Is your 20 foot driveway there in red on that sketch? Could I ask just one question, what? if I may, Kucha? Quickly, quickly. Um, it looks like you could probably put one more in that oh, corner for that for the people that are there. That, that she asked for right. seven. She, she asked seven. for seven. Okay, that's all. I'm, that's all I wanted to make. Okay. Question, please. Yeah. Uh, I don't see the berm specifically, other than uh, tall at time of planning. Oh well, yeah. Did you? Uh, the berm. The two foot. Mm. The berm. Uh, you want to extend yeah, there's that? No mention of the berm. Um, that we just the berm was of, of interest to uh, Mr. To Bauer. Right here. Yes. But is, is it on because the plan? Because it makes but a two-foot difference. It's yeah. on the plan from Mr. Bauer, correct. Well, but where's but it's on not the plan? on our plan that we have to approve. Yeah. It's on the set that... The big one? Yes. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. This, the only addition is the other uh, seven that were negotiated at in, in the seven at the end this evening. In the driveway, right? Yeah. Chairman? The, no, what I want to do is get the transformer pad, the driveway, and the new shrubs all in one sketch because they differ from the gotcha. plan set. Do we, do we want to do 20 feet all the way through for the driveway, or are we talking that's, about? That's yeah. what we did. Okay, you I'm did, good with you, that. You, that's, that's what we 20 did. all the way through, okay. uniform. Yep. Yep. Okay, so at this point, I'd entertain a motion to find that it meets all the special permit for the solar system meets all of the criteria required in the bylaw. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Want to check with Further first? discussion? Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Second of all is that we a motion to grant the special permit subject to the conditions that start on page 3 that go through page 5 which would be 13 plus the 14th which is noise and and there's some wording changes on on the the hours is going to yes. going to mimic the town thing and we got rid of the word substantially and that was it and we went through all this earlier in the meeting we went through mm -hmm. it all earlier in, in the, the meeting <coughs> so, so that's fine so second moved and seconded Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, the next is to approve the Stormwater Management Act for this. Subject to, or hold it, we, got, we, we have to find something, don't we? We do. Additional we, information on, uh, on two, right here, on the back side. How about if we find that we meet the 10 standards yeah. that are, are listed on pages 5, 6, and part of 7? So moved. Second. And uh, so, further discussion? I think we found this additional information that was left in that one column. 
they, on three, they, and, on yeah. three and four. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. With, with, yeah. 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 So basically, so we're, we're basically finding that we meet the approval criteria, and that's the motion in front of us. Ready for the vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And the second is that we uh, motion would be that we approve the stormwater management permit subject to the conditions that are. Listed on the bottom of page seven, eight, nine, and ten. And ten, which goes one through seven. Five through, uh, one through seven. Three through seven. One through seven. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay, I so think. You made a motion. To to, to stormwater. To approve it. To approve. Yeah. With conditions. Yeah. With you. Okay. Okay. Look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, close the public hearing. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, you're all set. All right. Thank, Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks for doing that for us. Wait, wait just a second. Oh, not you guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Chief. Get some rest, will you? Have a good one. Okay. Uh, we will consider the appointments next meeting because we're going to get out of here. Uh, we, we need somebody for the design review board member from this committee. Can we do that one now? Okay. If we don't, like last time we were, you were short of a quorum because we were short of people. Okay. Who, who wants to be on the design review board? <laughs> the total champion <laughs> works. Come on, somebody's got to. Sh you get to see me one more time a month. <laughs> I'll do it by default. We have we have a volunteer. We're Excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For one year. For one year. For one year. Yeah, yeah. Only once a month. Once a month. Yep. I uh, go, David. Thank you. Uh, sure. thank look for you. a motion to approve uh, David I for motion. the design review second. board. Moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. We'll let the other two, John, you were on open sp space, and I, I was on CPC. But we'll talk about those more next time. Um, engineering contract for West Main Street. Dave Dottario went on vacation without getting his stuff. Did you find something, Jennifer? So, yes, I ended up sending him and Elaine an email off chance that they were responding, and they both were. And um, he forwarded it to the engineer who was also on vacation, who responded with, I will not have it for you tonight. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> they do not have anything. But the money has already been encumbered. Elaine has already requested that that money be encumbered. So, we so, don't need to spend it before July 1. Okay. Encumbering the money allows us to kind of hang on to it. It's about five grand. Five to go. I gotta pick up two doors. That's, that's what I mean. Mean. Okay, Thank you guys. I think Thank you. everything else will defer. I look for a motion to uh, adjourn. So move second. Move and second. Anyone want to stay? Say no. <laughs> Meetings adjourned. So can you on the CDC? I, I would like to be, but we're not. We're not.